welcome. First of all, I welcome Professor S. V. Halse, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Dongere University, Dongere. He is always interested in academic activities of the university, motivates all teachers to involve in them, which has resulted in various webinars, seminars, workshops in all departments of the university. He is trying hard to uplift our university. Even in his busy schedule, he has accepted our invitation and uh, he will be present here on behalf of the Department and Research Scholars Forum. I extend a warm welcome to Professor S. V. Halse, sir. Now, I welcome Professor Basuraj Bankar, sir, Registrar of Daungere University, Daungere, to this gathering. He is a good administrator, actively participating in all department activities, encouraging us for our progress. Welcome you, sir, on behalf of our department. I okay. welcome Professor H.S. Anita, Registrar Evaluation, Daungere University, for accepting our invitation. And I welcome you, madam. It is time to welcome our resource persons who are well-known academicians in economics. I welcome Professor S. Prakash S. Kamle, Department of uh, Studies in Economics, uh, Kolhapur, uh, Maharashtra, for accepting our invitation. He is uh, presenting his views on COVID-19 and uh, Indian industry and agriculture. Welcome you, sir. Thank I welcome you. Professor, Professor S.R. Keshav, Department of Economics, Daungere University, Daungere. He will mm -hmm. discuss on COVID-19 and Indian economy issues and strategies. Welcome you, sir, for this uh, program. Now, Professor Krishna Raj, Isaac Bangalore, he will deliver his uh, views on COVID-19 environment and uh, sustainable development. I welcome you, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, I welcome uh, Professor S.T. Bagalkoti, Department of Economics, Karnataka University, Darwad, for accepting our invitation. He is expressing his thoughts on beyond the COVID-19 pandemic policy choices for healthy India. I welcome you, sir, for this uh, program. Thank you, madam. I welcome, thank you, sir. I welcome Professor K.B. Rangappa, Chairman and Dean of uh, Department of Economics, Daungere University, and he will be moderating uh, this uh, panel discussion. I also welcome my esteemed colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Huche Gowda, uh, Associate Professor, who is uh, coordinating uh, this program. And also I welcome Dr. R. Selvi, Associate Professor of uh, Economics Department. Now, I welcome all the participants, faculty members, uh, research scholars, and students of various uh, departments and various universities uh, who responded uh, very quickly and supported to all our uh, department activities of uh, economics department. I once again wholeheartedly welcome all of you on behalf of our university department as well as our research scholars form. Thank you one and all. Madam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I request Uchay Gowda sir to introduce the panelists to this uh, uh, this uh, this platform. To this platform, Uchay Gowda sir, please. It's okay, sir. It's okay, sir. It's a uh, time to introduce our. Uh, share the, uh, do you like to share the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Huh? Chetan, please enable my. You know that the share share sharing now. I sorry, you can uh, share your this thing, sir. Slides, sir. Okay. 
thank you uh, it is a time to introduce our uh, uh, panelists of uh, today's uh, uh, you know that uh, do the slides or the uh, yeah yes, please visible no sir i think from my side it is uh, something it is not visible now it is not visible sir it is not visible yeah, uh, uh, yeah now, uh, it, now it is now it's okay you can go ahead yeah now it is all right now it's all right we check out sir how we can proceed yeah okay sir we have a professor uh, uh, actually uh, sorry it is a time to introduce our uh, a uh, panelist to the uh, participants uh, uh luckily today we have a uh, uh, professor uh, st bangalkoti sir so sir is a uh, uh, professor of uh, uh, economics uh, in uh, karnataka university uh, darwad so pg department uh, as well as uh, he, he is a director of uh, iqc so he is a uh, you know first class uh, uh, from he he he, 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 he had a, a master degree from uh, kud uh, with the first class so and has been teaching it to pg students for the last 31 years he was a recipient of a university uh, open merit and national merit scholarship he served as the chairman so department of uh, economics during uh, 2012 and uh, 14 and as the coordinator of the ugc sap uh, in uh, economics during 2019 12 and uh, 19 so sir also successfully uh, guided a uh, uh, 21 uh, phd students and eight uh, mphil students and the uh, 30 uh, master master dissertation he has edited uh, uh, a book and published more than 60 paper he is a resource person to train pu ug and pg teachers net state aspirants resource scholars el elected uh, representatives and other development uh, functionaries he has uh, delivered endowment lecture keynote address innovative talks and chaired uh, technical sessions at uh, national uh, seminar and conference so he has uh, organized at uh, 12 academic uh, events at uh, national and state level so is a core area of uh, research are rural economics and environment uh, environmental economics so he has completed 14 research projects so uh, relating to agriculture development utilization of uh, health so uh, like that so then also uh, he is a statutory board so you know he is the head of the several uh, you know that uh, uh, bodies in the department So as well as in the university level, so also sir was uh, you know that uh, uh, he is in the editorial boards of uh, Karnataka University of uh, Journal of uh, uh, Social Science and Journal of Development Change, Assam Economic Review. So like that. So and and also sir he is a life and ordinary member of professional uh, bodies and organizations uh, of uh, like uh, Indian Economic Association, Indian Society of Agricultural Economics, uh, like that. In the sense of the same way. he has assisted uh, the university administration as in a different uh, level uh, uh, like uh, vice president of uh, pg jimkana so deputy director of academic staff college so development officer then a rusa coordinator so uh, like uh, 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 like that you know so uh, sir was you know uh, also he he won that you know for, for this presentation as well as uh, for the presentation so sir uh, uh, of the in the sense you know that, that the university of protection for excellence proposal uh, which was uh, eventually awarded by the uh, ugc with a financial assistance of uh, rupees at 50 crore so he has worked actively with the nac iqac and tribali committee of kud tribali uh, committee in goa and uh, kolapur so universities so with this uh, once again i welcome uh, uh, professor uh, balkoti sir uh, to this uh, panel discussion i uh, welcome you sir sir ah uh, hocha sir once again sir Yes, sir. Uh, sir, if you go to, I mean, it's not uh, visible Sorry, actually. Sir, please, please go to slide. No, show. it is enough, sir. So it is enough, and it just go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it's fine. Sir. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, one more. Uh, so that resource person as well as the panelist uh, uh, today. So that is uh, Professor uh, Prakash Kamble, sir. So Prakash Kamble, sir, is uh, currently serving as a uh, professor in the. Uh, economics department at shivaji university kolapur so uh, sir has been uh, you know teaching experience uh, of uh, 31 years so in that uh, pg level so he was a recipient of uh, many awards so like uh, uh, late uh, 
danaji rao uh, uh, gadgil uh, gadgil prize so and uh, research papers given you know that uh, shivaji university economic association so then also he, uh, he is the winner of a uh, uh, late professor uh, vm dandekar prize so also he is the winner of a uh, late dananjay uh, rao gadgil prize so then also he won the best paper for his uh, uh, presentation in malaysia as well as japan so then also uh, uh, so, uh, under his uh, able guidance you know he guided 11 phd students and 13 uh, mphil students so and at 275 master dissertations so he has written 19 books and also edited 10 books and published more than 181 research paper so uh, along with this research paper sir has written 65 newspaper articles in various uh, daily newspaper so he is a resource person of different training programs organized by the different organizations in the state as well as the national level so sir has delivered endowment lecture keynote address innovative talks and chaired many technical sessions in this national as well as the international conferences he organized many academic events at uh, uh, national and uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, at the state level so and, uh, and along with these he has completed successfully completed two major research project projects so funded by UGC and ICSSR so then also so sir, uh, uh, sir has participated and presented a paper in a different uh, national seminar national as well as international seminar in a national as well as international level so sir, uh, during this period he visited japan and uh, malaysia so for his uh, academic uh, work then also sir has served uh, many that academic bodies uh, in that uh, university level as well as the state level so with this uh, once again with this brief introduction once again i welcome professor uh, uh, ps kamble sir to this uh, academy uh, that, that panel discussion welcome thank you sir. you sir thank you very much thank you then we have uh, uh, one more uh, panelist uh, 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 in this, uh, you know, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, discussion. That is a uh, professor uh, Esau, Esau, uh, Keshav sir. So we are all uh, well known about uh, professor Keshav sir, especially that uh, Karnataka people are uh, well known about uh, him. So professor, uh, you know, uh, of economics in that uh, PG department of economics in Bangalore, State Bangalore. So sir is a well uh, received teacher, researcher, and panelist on economic issues. Uh, in uh, different uh, television, te television channels in national as well as uh, you know the state level so as well as you know he is a good learner because uh, sir has uh, uh, having you know two masters in both economics as well as uh, in a pg and also sir is having two mphils and one doctorate uh, degrees so in both uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, the economics as well as management so he has written nine books which include uh, economics from a new age publication so new delhi so he is a resource person for uh, economic survey so published by planning and financial department of Karn government of karnataka so he was a core committee member or uh, to evaluate methodology for uh, green gsdp methodology for karnataka so he has uh, presented more than 160 research paper in national and international seminars and delivered more than 150 noted addresses which also include is a uh, session at a uh, knowledge uh, resource uh, centers of uh, various universities he has uh, published around 100 articles in reputed journals uh, in the national as well as international level and edited books so he has delivered more than 26 uh, keynote uh, and the valedictory address at various national and international seminars and conferences. And also he is chaired an equal member of technical sessions in national and international seminars. So he is the technical committee member of Karnataka Evaluation Authority. And he was a panelist more than 150 to uh, 200 live programs pertaining to economic issues on televisions in uh, uh, various channels. So with this, uh, once again, I welcome uh, Professor uh, uh, SR Keshav, sir, this uh, you know, panel discussion. Welcome you, sir. So again, we have uh, uh, one more uh, panelist. Uh, uh, so that is uh, Professor uh, Sir, uh, Professor Krishnaraj Sir. So uh, Professor Krishnaraj Sir uh, is the Professor of uh, uh, another uh, Center of uh, e Economic Studies and Policy, Institute, of, Institute for Socio and Economic Change, Bangalore, India. So he obtained a PhD in economics from uh, University of Mysore. So most of his work in the field of uh, environment, so environmental economics, particularly on forest property rights and uh, deforestation in the Western Guards, climate change and efficiency of water supply and demand management in New York and uh, uh, Bangalore cities, Nagarhole and uh, Bandipura national parks. So ecotourism and local communities, urban air pollution and economic traffic uh, uh, conjunctions, non-performing assets and so on. Earlier, he served as an uh, Indian uh, Council uh, uh, for cultural relations, uh, chair uh, a professor on Indian economy under the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India at uh, 
Hancock uh, University of uh, Foreign Studies, uh, Seoul, South Korea. So he was a visiting uh, scholar at the uh, University of uh, uh, Wisconsin, Echo, e. Claire, uh, USA. He is awarded with the uh, Sir Ratan Tata Trust Research Fellowship for Collaborative Research with the University of uh, Wisconsin, USA. He also undertaken collaborative research with the University of uh, Gulf, Canada on water conflicts of uh, in Kaveri River Basin. He also visited the University of uh, San Francisco, USA. His research on uncounted of, uh, for water uh, in Bangalore City received good uh, academic and uh, policy responses. So Professor Krishnaraj study on uh, economic, socio-economic analysis of Bangalore Mysore Infrastructure mm -hmm. Corridor uh, project. So he, he served as the expert committee member of Karnataka, uh, government of Karnataka for uh, preparing the report on uh, uh, reservation for promotion by uh, uh, complaining citizens. Expert committee member of uh, the study uh, to study the issue of Karnataka State Open History after withdrawal of uh, UGC uh, recognition. Currently, he is the expert committee member of Karnataka State Wetland Conservation uh, uh, Authority. So, and also expert committee member of uh, you know, the Central and the State Karnataka Pollution Control Board. He submitted uh, many reports to the uh, to the government of Karnataka. So, he has uh, been invited to a, a key speaker to more than ten conferences. So. And also, he's published a good number of articles in uh, uh, national as well as international journals, popular articles in newspaper, and also policy papers. He served as a, a panel expert expert in uh, uh, live television programs on contemporary economic as well and as well as uh, environmental issues. He is teaching two courses in economics for so MOOCs. So with these with these things, once again, I welcome uh, Professor Krishnaraj, uh, sir, to this uh, you know panel discussion. So welcome you, sir. Thank you. So with this brief introduction, so once again, I welcome all the panelists to this uh, panel discussion. Welcome you all. So thank you. So over to Professor uh, Arangapa, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chagoda. Awesome. Now we should have, uh, uh, we have a message from our Vice Chancellor, uh, Chetan. Hi, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, please play the message from, from our Vice Chancellor, please. Yeah, one second, sir. Followed by, uh, I just uh, we will have uh, uh, guest, uh, you know, guest speech by our uh, honorable uh, registrar. Research. So they are organizing a webinar on BI COVID 19 pandemic policy choices and productive and healthy India. Resource persons are ST, Professor ST Bhagan Koti and uh, Professor Prakash S. Kamble, uh, Professor SR Keshava, and Professor Krishna Raj. Persons and uh, our fraternities are uh, Professor Rangappa, Chairman, Department of uh, Economics and Dean of the Science uh, Arts Faculty, and uh, all his team. They are doing wonderful uh, work uh, in the COVID pandemic uh, 19 pandemic. And I congratulate the Department of uh, Economics for organizing this type of uh, webinars for the students and for the faculties. And uh, all we know very well about this uh, 19 pandemic, we are uh, uh, facing a lot of problems for that, even though our department, all departments, they are organizing webinars. And uh, in that, our economic department organized so many webinars and uh, one more webinar will be organized on 27th at uh, 11 o'clock and uh, this is uh, very useful for the uh, this situation and uh, I once again congratulate all the team of the Ketan, Vasraj Manakar sir is there. Any yeah, once again. I mean, uh, unmute that, please. Yeah, Basura yes. sir can, uh, yes sir, Basura yeah, sir yeah, can yeah. unmute himself. Sir, please sir, register sir, just unmute your uh, audio sir. 
and i request our uh, register on, i mean uh, our uh, uh, honorable registrar sir to to uh, uh, speak uh, you know give us a uh, uh, some uh, advice to this uh, discussion sir please sir professor yeah. sir good morning all good morning uh, our honorable vice chancellor professor halse sir and our register evaluation professor anita and uh, professor adi rao uh, finance officer and today panelist uh, professor uh, st bagalkoti and uh, prakash uh, kamle and professor uh, sr keshav and professor krishnaraj and uh, today's uh, that is a moderator of the this webinar panel uh, discussion professor k rangappa kv and uh, other faculty members of the economics departments uh my dear students and uh, research scholar faculty members good morning all uh, really it's a privilege for me to address you on this occasion that is covid uh, behind covid 19 pandemic policies choice for a productive and uh, healthy india see as our abdul kalam ji told uh india that will be number 1 in 2020 now we are, we have to think everybody has to think especially economist has to think how we can bring bring this india to number 1 so this is the time for us to that is uh, exhibit our best is possible so economics we have to think economics in every directions every place we have to think that is economics how we can improve and your department has to play very very vital role so as my my request to all panelists so just you what you can do is uh, you know trigger our students so where they can uh, research scholars and faculty members where they can you know able to uh, that is enter they enter the field and able to contribute something to the uh, you know for healthy india and as well as productive india our best is possible you know there i think so many countries are now looking towards india and what factors what factor factors uh, that you know everybody think uh, about the india and we can increase the productivity and as well as we can make the in the india healthy so with this i appreciate the you know coordinator that is you know department of economics conducting this excellent uh, panelist program you have, you have brought a very excellent panelist members here and the great as i observed the uh, professor uchariti has read the profile of the each of uh, the speakers uh, panelist really great potential uh, resources are there and i, I inform to all participants Uh, listen carefully the these are all like you know big discussions arguments and all will be there uh, listen carefully the arguments and meticulously analyze these of the arguments and all the things and finally at the conclusion uh, all students supposed to contribute all research supposed students come to contribute and faculty members also contribute for the that is development of the uh, india and also productive india thank you very much for giving this opportunity i wish you all the best for the program. thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much and uh, now i request uh, our uh, registrar of commerce uh, uh, professor anita madam to to share few words in this occasion please madam uh, chetan okay. yeah please uh, uh, he has unmuted me yeah, yeah. okay thank you are you uh, am i audible yeah yes madam yes, yes. yeah yeah good morning to good morning to all uh, i am very happy today to be a part of this uh, panel discussion first of all let me salute our honorable vice chancellor sv halse sir being part of this uh, session and uh, dr basavraj banakar sir registrar and uh, dr rangappa chairman of economics department and uh, all the participants and over and above all these a uh, very tempting panelists Uh, when you look at the names alone definitely everyone who is interested in economics will uh, definitely come forward to join the whole uh, session i think uh, i have heard uh, professor bagalkoti several times a very good orator and i have heard professor kamli sir also and uh, uh, very much professor keshav is almost every day we meet him on television i think and uh, uh, professor krishna raj a very good good old uh, colleague of ours is once again online so we are very much happy all these uh, experts have come forward to speak to uh, so many participants i heard from professor rangappa that uh, more than 100 and uh, 450 participants have uh, joined this uh, 
session and definitely this is going to be a very good uh, academic exercise apart from that uh, my uh, suggestion i don't know whether would you take it as a suggestion definitely such big brains have joined whatever the outcome of this particular panel discussion will have to go into policy changes so definitely i wish the whole exercise go very successfully and i wish the whole team of professor rangappa uh, let the whole event be very successful thank you very much for having given me an opportunity to address you thank you thank you thank you madam thank you very much thank you for uh, joining us yeah thank you ichcha kada sir sir yeah shall we start okay sir please sir yeah uh, uh, we shall uh, take up our uh, the core uh, uh, core core uh, uh, content of this uh, panel uh, discussion uh, honorable uh, vice chancellor in his absence yeah uh, respected registrar professor uh, basraj banakar sir our uh, uh, honorable registrar evaluation madam professor anita madam uh, today's panelist professor st bogal bagalkoti sir professor uh, Pra uh, prakash s kamble sir professor s r keshav professor krishna raj and my dear colleagues uche gowda selvi madam suchitra and uh, and and, and uh, the most important part, uh, parts the participants uh, of uh, this webinar i mean uh, we have participants across all parts of the country and my dear students uh, research scholars uh, good morning to you all uh, you know everybody's life has been affected by this covid 19 in almost all parts of the world uh, including i mean uh, our uh, our country is not an exception to this thing and in fact uh, businessmen incurred huge monetary loss whereas common man suffered income loss and also uh, the, 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 there is lack of access to basic necessities and uh, uh, so many other other hardships and uh, difficulties the hardships the people experienced and the pain they have undergone will become their lifetime memory and in fact people have apprehension about the future yes, india the most worrying factor are when will this pandemic end and when will we get vaccination or effective treatment to this pandemic of course answer to these questions are not in our domain in fact heads of uh, reputed institutions uh, including uh, reserve bank of india opined that growth rate will be in the negative quadrant but what will be its magnitude and what will be the uh, unemployment rate in the years to come and could we expect reverse migrants to participate in the uh, mg nregf work and what will be the level of capacity utilization in indian industries due to a uh, declining purchasing power of the people and expenditure needs of the government are growing at a alarming yeah, rate i am, I am, I am on revenue on. collection capacity of the country is declining again it is one there is one more apprehension what yeah. will be the extent of fiscal deficit oh, oh. to come yes, and yes. what is its effect, what is its likely effect on the fiscal uh, inflation rate and this backdrop demands experts discussion on the issues to design a road map for the future india we have four panelists in this platform and they are all experts in the different domain and uh, different domains of economics in fact uh, professor kamble is very good in agriculture and uh, our krishna raj work in different domains of knowledge he work on uh, sustainability environment and other things keshav as already anita madam told always he will be in the uh, television uh, channels to have discussion in different uh, uh, indian economic issues uh, st bagalkote sir is also very good in development economic issues you see we have uh, actually in the beginning we shall have uh, um, presentation by you know uh, these uh, experts for uh, we shall have some one hour presentation from these experts then we could spend some half an hour for the discussion so uh, we have four uh, presentations one is from first one is from uh, prakash k s kamble sir who is going to speak on covid 19 and indian industry and agriculture followed by professor s r keshav is going to uh, share his opinion or share his views on covid 19 and indian economy 
issues and uh, strategies and then uh, professor krishna raj is going to share his views on covid 19 environment and sustainable development finally uh, professor st bogalkoti sir is going to speak on behind the covid 19 pandemic policy choice for the healthy india so uh, after listening to these experts you could have uh, uh, discussion for an half an hour first i request uh, professor prakash s kamble sir to share his views on covid 19 and indian industry indian industry and agriculture i request uh, uh, Pra professor prakash s kamble sir uh, to, to take some 15 minutes to share views on these topics please sir over okay. to uh, <coughs> thank you very prakash much yeah, kamble sir please sir please sir am i audible sir am i audible yeah, yeah you are audible sir you are audible sir please uh -huh. Uh, at the very outset, I am very much thankful to Dawar University, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Registrar, uh, Evaluation Registrar, my my colleague, Chairman of the Department, Professor Rangappa, all all faculty members, uh, Hutche Gowda is there, uh, Suchitra Madam is there, Selvi Madam is there, my uh, fellow panelist, very close friend of mine, uh, Professor Bagal Koti, Professor Keshav, Professor Kurusharaj, and dear participants and friends. Uh, i am very much thankful to organizers for providing an opportunity to share my thoughts on impact of covid 19 on industry and agriculture and policy direction uh, uh, can i can i uh, share my uh, presentation sir hoche yeah, gado yes sir yes sir yes sir yes, sir. yes sir. Chetan. Chetan, uh, chetan ayo sir one second sir one second please enable uh, prakash kamble sir uh... one second sir yeah yeah now sir can uh, share sir Okay. Please, sir. Sir, share your uh, PPT, sir. Please. Yes. Is is it visible? Yeah, uh, it just is, it is, it started, yeah. sir. Started, sir. Uh, just. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Uh, just no, slide. Slide show is not so coming. So the slide, sir. From your side, you have to show. Ah uh ha! -huh. I have to show, but that icon is not coming. Ah, uh, just. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. You are desktop. Just show that, sir. Yes. Ha. Uh, okay. It's fine. Is it uh, visible? No, so actually, is it is okay, it sir, okay, visible? Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so far as uh, my presentation is concerned, basically it will be divided into three to four parts. Number one is what is the magnitude and extent of COVID nineteen infection? What are the salient features? Number two is its impact on. industry and agriculture in india number 3 is what policy measures the government of india has introduced number 4 is what are the factors which have been affected by policy of lockdown which contributed to the adverse impact on industry and agriculture in india and in the last part of my my uh, lecture i will try to place before you what can be a policy guideline what policies will be useful so far as reviving of the economy from the adverse impact of covid 19 uh, so far as the uh, present scenario of is concern today we have in all 490401 cases infected from covid 19 of which 189463 are active cases 15301 are death taken place And two lakh eighty five thousand six hundred thirty seven cases are cured. So far as state analysis is concerned, Maharashtra is leading uh, with one lakh forty seven seven hundred forty one cases, followed by Delhi with seventy three thousand seven hundred eighty. Then Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, and Uttar Pradesh. So far as uh, rate of recovery is concerned, it is Gujarat which is uh, in leading position with seventy two point eighty three percent. Uh, which is uh, followed by uh, uttar pradesh which uh, with 65% uh, then uh, delhi with 61% maharashtra with 52% again there are a few few metropolitan cities which have been prominently infected by uh, the covid 19 infection uh, one is uh, uh, delhi then mumbai chennai thane uh, ahmedabad pune hyderabad kolkata gurgaon in those these are the prominent cities those have been very much affected so far as the covid 19 present position is concerned this talks about what the scenario is there 
across the globe and us is a prominent victim which is followed by uk uh, so far as the impact is concerned and this gives us a position of uh, the across the states uh, infection of uh, 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 covid 19 uh, in india uh, this gives us what the scenario is there in the world uh, especially uh, this is very important because uh, this is in the unlock one period from 1st June to 90 June, actually, I wanted to place before you till uh, to, uh, uh, 27, but I didn't get that. Uh, but it shows a, a continuous rising trend uh, that I want to uh, bring to your notice. Uh, but at the same time, uh, one thing is necessary, recovery is increasing. Uh, proportion of active cases uh, is also uh, uh, a little bit, uh, it is slower, it is slower. Uh, but the death rates are more or less constant. Uh, that is also there. Uh, which necessary to be taken into account. So far as uh, we are in the fifth lockdown, uh, four have been completed. And uh, this, this shows how uh, this lockdown has not affected uh, favorably. So far as controlling the infection of COVID-19, especially after second lockdown, there is a continuous increase in the number of cases infected as well as the number of cases active uh, that I want to bring to your notice uh, so far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned. While talking about uh, infection of COVID-19, all of us know uh, treatment is expected to be given in uh, public uh, health, health hospitals and infrastructure facilities. And later on, private sector hospitals and infrastructure help. But the, the number of tests which are being carried out is comparatively very, very uh, uh, meager. Uh, this, this data shows uh, in India, uh, only uh, 802 uh, per day cases were being tested. Uh, later on, a little bit increase is found uh, to 2056. And at this moment also, uh, some improvement has been taken place so far as uh, the uh, testing of the COVID-19 patient is concerned. Now, while talking about what is mortality and morbidity uh, profile, it is found that in the age group, uh, 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 male are 76% 70, infected and female are 24. And in the age group less than 40, 47%. In the age group 40 to 60, 43%. And greater than 60, it is 19%. But so far as uh, uh, the, the deaths is concerned, uh, the deaths is that uh, prominently it is for the senior citizens, that is 60 and above. Uh, that is there, that is more than 63%. Between 40 to 60, it is 30 percent, and less than 40 to 7 percent. That's also peculiarity which is necessary to be taken into account. Uh, the same is being presented uh, in this slide. Now, uh, moving towards uh, the impact of COVID-19 on industry and agriculture, all of us know uh, it's a new disease. At this moment, also vaccine is not there and medicine is not there, and therefore uh, some of the measures and remedies. Uh, the efforts are being made so as to implement in India, which are comprising of hand wash is there, use of sanitizer is there, uh, then uh, maintaining physical or safe distancing is there, uh, use of face uh, mask is there. And in addition to that, we adopted lockdown policy. First, we uh, adopted social curfew and after 24 March, uh, we have adopted uh, lockdown and lockdown is in fifth stage and unlock, unlock is in first stage uh, that is there. Now, how, how this affected, uh, first of all, Indian economy, and then I will proceed to agriculture and industry. Uh, so far as uh, uh, all of us know that the GDP is an indicator of economic growth, and that shows that after, after lockdown, especially what a significant fall is being observed in GDP of India, that growth rate is shown. Uh, this is up to January 3.1% and further decrease is found in the GDP of India. Uh, then uh, this is a, a forecasting uh, given about the GDP of India uh, in the uh, uh, 1920. In the first quarter, it will be 5.6%. Uh, second quarter 5.1 percent third quarter 4.7 percent and recently it is less than uh, 4 percent that's a decline in gdp uh all of us know international monetary fund has given some forecasting about the gdp uh, uh, in the, uh first forecasting in uh, 2020 year india will grow at 1.9 percent uh, china 1.2 us minus 6.1 world uh, minus 3 and latest forecasting al also there uh, of the uh, this IMF, uh, I will uh, touch upon later on. So far as the World Bank forecast is concerned, in the year 2020, uh, GDP of India grew 
will grow at the rate of minus 3.2 percent china by one percent us by minus seven percent and world economy by uh, minus five percent uh, this is the latest forecast given by the international monetary fund about the trends in gdp of india and it is found that world will grow at the minus rate of about five percent uh, then uh, this uh, uh, india will grow at the uh, 4.5 percent minus uh, in the year and 1.9 percent previous forecasting but it will be by minus 4.5 percent and it will take uh, 22 in the year 22 uh, by 6 percent uh, that is there state bank of india has also given forecasting that there will be 40 percent fall uh, in gdp of india in the april to june quarter of 2020 and one of the forecasting uh, india rating and research agency has given and according to that agency in the year 2019-20, there will be a decline in GDP of India by minus or 5.3%, and that will be the highest in the 40%. In addition to that, Reserve Bank of India also given a forecasting of uh, uh, what will be the growth of GDP that is negative, uh, and uh, uh, it will be zero, that forecasting also given by the Reserve Bank of India. Now, talking about uh, agriculture and industry what is what is share of agriculture and industry uh, in the gdp of india and why it is necessary to analyze and assess the impact of covid 19 on industry and agriculture that is also necessary to be taken into account first of all as per the cons uh, current prices the share of agriculture to the gdp of india is about 16 percent and industry it is about 30 percent and service sector is more than 50 percent that is indian economy is a service sector dominated economy and to that extent contributions of industry and agriculture is not to the up, uh, up to the mark so far as its contribution to the growth of uh, indian economy on the one hand and gdp of india on the other hand and unless and until we have a industrial growth Unless and until we have agriculture growth, uh, the growth which will be of what we call it as a, a sustainable growth or, or which will be long term growth that cannot be realized. And it is therefore, even though ours is a service sector dominated economy, our development uh, emphasis should be given on agriculture and industry. And that makes a justification so far as how there is a need for assessing impact of COVID-19 on industry and agriculture. Uh, this slide gives us how the uh, growth rate of agriculture and forest is decreasing continuously uh, quarter wise in 2019-20 year. How the growth rate of industry is uh, declining continuously, uh, especially uh, in the uh, post lockdown period, quarter wise in the 2019-20. At the same time, mining and quarrying that is also showing a declining trend with some exceptions. And manufacturing sector has hit hard. So far as growth is concerned, it, it is minus 4%. That's the forecasting uh, given by the Reserve Bank of India. So far as the quarter-wise growth is to be taken into account. So what is important is how the industrial sector is growing uh, uh, in the post-COVID-19 lockdown period. That is of crucial importance. And this gives us data. It will, it will grow at minus 18%, 18.3%. Uh, in the in the post lockdown period uh, which was uh, previously positive and in the pre lockdown period it was uh, it was comparatively better but in the post lockdown period it is minus and the intensity of minus is significantly higher that is minus 18.3 percent uh, which is necessary to be taken in account this gives us month to month month to month fall in industrial output and that is in the post lockdown period first by uh, minus 2.7 percent and later on by minus 10 percent uh, that gives us an idea how, how it is it is adverse affecting so far as uh, the impact of covid 19 especially lockdown policy is concerned now all of us know uh, that uh, 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 when industry wise production is also taken into take example steel is there uh, how there is a declining trend that is in april uh, this, this bar shows a significant decline compared to previous and future uh, further on it has also uh, decreased uh, very significantly in the post lockdown period uh, that is uh, in addition to that uh, when we talk about uh, further decline take example cement production uh, again a rapid fall is observed uh, from pre uh, 90 uh, lockdown period to post lockdown period take example in april uh, a, a significant 
the fall was observed and further it was continuously decline uh, in the post lockdown period uh, this uh, gives us an idea uh, about uh, production of cars a rapid was observed in car production uh, that that figure shows how cyclical uh, fall has been observed now construction is one of the important activities uh, but uh, to that extent uh, after especially a liberal uh, liberalizing uh, liberalizing of the indian economy uh, meagerly and slowly uh, a significant uh, uh, a, a, some improvement is observed but to that extent it did now uh, this mining uh, to that extent uh, uh, not adversely affected uh, now this gives us an idea uh, very important about how the covid 19 lockdown policy impacted uh, take example some core company talk on indian uh, industry sector contracted by 38% in the post lockdown period of which is cement by 80% electricity by 23% fertilizer by 4.5% crude oil by 6.3% and these are the details uh, that talk about what was the scenario of uh, some of the industrial activities uh, in the pre lockdown period uh, lockdown period especially one year back and in the post lockdown period after one year uh, that is being presented in this uh, statistical information now talking about impact of uh, covid 19 lockdown on on agriculture actually this year uh, that is uh, in the in the in the previous year that is 1920 natural conditions were favorable uh, even excessive rain, rainfall was there flood situation was there uh, uh, rabi uh, that uh, uh, was uh, favorable Uh, Rabi was uh, favorable, and the first first season, uh, Kharif was adversely affected because of excessive rainfall and flood situation like that. And uh, actually, agriculture was expected to grow uh, significantly, but lockdown policy uh, adversely affected because no market access was there, no uh, logistic facility was there, and. further it shows a, a declining trend in the agriculture production some agriculture produce were disposed of uh, were destroyed with lack of demand uh, uh, that uh, this talks about how there is a declining trend in the uh, production of grains in the in the post lockdown period rice wheat pulses uh, then uh, oil seeds is there Uh, sugar cane is there those are prominently showing a negative trend so far as their growth is concerned even though uh, rainfall and natural conditions were favorable uh, that requires to be taken into account uh, but one agriculture paradox uh, uh, agriculture dilemma that i want to uh, place before the audience that is on the one hand the prices of agriculture commodities uh, were falling uh, farmers were not in a position to dispose of uh, agricultural to produce they were not in a position to get adequate prices because of no market access no transport no other logistics but in cities and metropolitan cities there was a rising trend in some of the prices and this phenomenon i describe as agricultural paradox or agriculture dilemma or we can say agriculture inflation take example prices of cereals and products rose by from 1.2% to 8% during april 19 to april 20 prices of milk uh, milk products rose from 0.4% to 9.4% oil and fats 0.7% to 10.8% fruits increase vegetables 2.9 to 23.6% pulses from 0.8% to 22.8% previously it was minus that shows about in the cities and metropolitan cities uh, prices of some of the agriculture commodities uh, shown rapid change and that phenomenon is is described as what we call it as a agriculture inflection or paradox that, that is there uh, this talks about how how the poultry production uh, showed a declining trend in the in the post lockdown period uh, all of us know uh, it was a misconception that uh, that covid 19 uh, virus is there in the in the Uh, chicken and eggs and therefore it was destroyed and consequently uh, poultry production showed a significantly uh, decline rapid decline trend and later on a little bit liberal uh, liberalization some some uh, liberalization of the economy is that helped us in a little bit rise in poultry production uh, now this is what i want to explain before you so far as the impact of covid 19 lockdown uh, on uh, agriculture industry and just i try to touch upon gdp of india 
Now, why this happened? This happened because of the lockdown policy and whatever the determinants of growth were there, determinants of industry were there, determinants of agricultural sector were there, those were adversely affected by the lockdown policy. And therefore, in this part of my lecture, I am trying to place before you how the determinants of agricultural industrial development adversely affected, it is because of the lockdown policy and uh, the lockdown that we adopted. Now, take example, uh, purchasing managers index of manufacturing sector that shows uh, what's the desire and willingness of the people to purchase manufacturing commodities and that should uh, continuously rapidly rise in trend. A little bit uh, rise is observed, but it is just meager and insignificant. Uh, then uh, composite uh, purchasing managers, in the, it is for the economy as a whole, uh, that is also shows a, a rapid fall and a little bit improvement uh, that is observed. Capacity utilization, significantly declining trend in capacity utilization. Take example, in January, uh, it was 68.6% uh, and further on, it very rapidly declined. The Indian business expectations index that talks about investment in business and the demand for business services and activities being uh, done by the people. And that shows a, a, a rapid decline when we try to make its comparison with the pre-lockdown period in the post-lockdown period, uh, that has also a decline in trend. Then uh, investment can play a role in the growth of the industry sector and agriculture sector, but the loans and advances given by the banks that have shown a, a rapid decline in the post lockdown period and that, that this uh, slide shows how rapidly uh, the uh, loan disbursements by has been declined and that contributed in adverse effect on industry and agriculture uh, growth in India. Then after uh, loans and advances, capital formation also declined because uh, to that extent it, it couldn't contribute. Foreign direct investment also in the post-lockdown period has very rapidly declined compared to the post-lockdown period. And ultimately that also helped in uh, overall economy uh, economic growth adversely, likewise industry and agriculture uh, also. Uh, supplementary to that, uh, consumer sir, confidence... Uh, uh, sir, Prakash, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, uh... Uh, yes. some, try to conclude in another oh, yes, one. Yes, 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 yes. This also shows that how the demand uh, uh, decline and all other indicators, uh, that is government spending is there, fiscal expenditure is there, uh, all those are showing how declining trend uh, they took. It is because of the lockdown policy, which was just unplanned. It was just haphazard. No planning was there. No any pre-intimation was there. Export have shown a, a rapidly falling trend. Imports also declined uh, con considerably. Uh, all other, uh, that is import exports of fruit, nuts declined. Uh, other, other exports also declined. Dairy products uh, uh, declined. Uh, that shows how this uh, adversely affected so far as the growth of the economy is concerned. As the result of that, employment generation very rapidly declined and unemployment very rapidly increased. Uh, that is there. Now, uh, all of us know uh, this led to fall in employment, increase in unemployment and increase in poverty as well. And the government of India introduced some of the measures uh, economic stimulus package one and two. Uh, it was total of 20 lakh crore rupees. The government says it is 10% of GDP. Uh, it also covers uh, announcements and measures of Reserve Bank of India. In addition to that, the government of India intends to bring about economic reforms, especially with emphasis on privatization. Coal is there, mineral is there, defense is there, solar is there, uh, that is there. But uh, as per the experts, the economic stimulus package given by the government of India is significantly lesser compared with the uh, other foreign countries. Uh, this shows a diagrammatic presentation. And in addition to that, more importantly, what the government says it is uh, uh, 20 lakh crores, that is 10% uh, of GDP, according to experts, it is less than 1%. Uh, this calculation is there. Some other foreign experts also say it is uh, about 1% or less than 1%. Uh, one more peculiarity that economic stimulus package has a loan component more and direct assistance is lesser. That also requires to be taken into account. The foreign countries, direct transfer of income, that component is more and loan component is lesser. Uh, now, after uh, uh, unlock one and some uh, uh, liberalizations given, some little bit improvement is found, but to that extent, uh, that uh, uh, recovery of the economy is not being observed. Uh, take example, Maruti Suzuki decline is 88%, manufacturing decline is 31%, uh, that is there. 
and uh, some employment generation has taken place uh, in the informal sector uh, but to that extent uh, it didn't uh, cover what the loss to the employment and unemployment problem that has taken place uh, because of the lockdown policy uh, this uh, automobile smartphone all those show uh, a meager improvement and not to the extent expected and desirable uh, in the unlock one and some of the uh, uh, liberalization of freedoms uh, those are given uh, this talks about latest position of employment and unemployment uh, this is cmi data given on 30 june uh, 20. Uh, now moving towards uh, last part of my presentation in this backdrop uh, what should be there uh, so far as policy direction is concerned so as to uh, uh, revival of the economy with uh, my emphasis on industry and agriculture. Number one is that uh, economic stimulus package the government has given it is just uh, inadequate. Uh, that should, uh, one more package is required and that should be sector specific for industry, for agriculture. Uh, they can play a very important role in growth and development of the economy especially for the longer period. Uh, those uh, those uh, economic stimulus package should have uh, uh, assistance pack, assistance component more that is direct transfer of income should take place more from the uh, from the government or from the banks and financial institution uh, to the to the beneficiary that is there uh, there is a need for because uh, informal sector employment uh, unemployment uh, migrant labors those have been very adversely affected we have 45 crore informal uh, uh, workers uh, 40 crore migrant workers and they have very adversely affected because of the growth and industry and agriculture adversely affected so basic universal income that policy should be implemented at least uh, 7500 rupees per month should be given to one and all uh, for their survival because uh, right, uh, that is a uh, 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 survival is their right as per constitution and that provision is there uh, we have enough uh, production of food grains so uh, it should be uh, distributed free of cost to the poor laborers and migrant laborers that is there uh, manrega can play important role in generating employment uh, mm -hmm. because now employment generation is very much necessary uh, that is there uh, that uh, should be there. Banking and the financial sector should be more liberal, more loans and advances without any uh, preconditions or without any uh, conditions that should be there. There should not be restrictions in the transfer of uh, loans from banks and financial institutions uh, to the industrialists, to the uh, farmers uh, that is there. Uh, then uh, the emphasis should be given on infrastructure development because that also can help us in agriculture and industry development. And growth with pro-employment that policy is required uh, further uh, liberalization of the economy is uh, required but when unlock one has been started already i have i have placed it in my presentation in one of the slides that the number of infected cases has been very significantly rising uh, so unlocking uh, that should also be precautionary uh, that should be precautionary means it is our responsibility it is the responsibility of the people it is the responsibility of the uh, society to, to keep safe distance, uh, uh, use of uh, mask, uh, use of sanitization, uh, and also uh, other necessary uh, things which are uh, required that is necessary to be uh, undertaken. And unless and until uh, the, the efforts are made rigorously, honestly, uh, rather it is very difficult to revive the economy, especially industry sector and agriculture sector. Even though India is a service sector dominated economy, industrial development and agriculture development that can play a very crucial role, role, that can play a very important role in the reviving of the economy and uh, uh, what I should say, uh, improving growth of the economy that is there. And in that direction, there is a need for rigorous, honest and sincere efforts in all directions and all perspectives that I, I try to place before you. Uh, in these words, uh, I must thank, uh, I, I must stop here. Uh, thank you, and all. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ranga Pasar. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for intervening. Uh, just actually you have to manage time. Uh, therefore, I just in point we please kindly excuse for that. Uh, now, uh, let us, you know, let us over to, uh, you know, uh, just I request uh, Professor Yassar Keshav, sir, to give his presentation on COVID-19 and Indian economy issues and challenges. So, please, sir, over to Keshav, sir. Uh, Chetan, please unmute. Uh, yes, sir. Keshav, sir. Uh... Yes, sir, sir, before sir, that, yeah. I would like to request Prakash Kamla, sir, to stop the screen sharing, yes. sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Kamla, sir, please uh, stop that. Uh, share. Just, just a minute. 
just just yeah okay, okay kishor sir yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. okay 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 thank yeah. you very much a warm uh, good afternoon to all of you, uh, respected uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, respected Registrar Basraj Banakar sir, respected uh, Register Evaluation Anita ma'am, uh, my teacher Bagal Koti sir, and co-panelist uh, and good friend uh, Prakash Kamble and Krishna Raj, uh, good friend Rangappa, Chuzitra madam, Harish Gowda, uh, Selvi ma'am, and all other uh, good friends and uh, faculty members. Indeed, very happy to be part of this uh, program as it is titled as Policy Changes for a Productive and a Healthy India. Because uh, when the whole world is in the pandemic, unhealthy situation is there, we are trying to look our way out for a healthy India. So because uh, my good friend Kamble has dealt in detail uh, from the origin of the virus to that of the solutions, you know, I will try to concentrate uh, purely much of my arguments on uh, what are the debatable issues or what are the major strategy issues that which are coming right now and what can be the solutions from my perspective, leading apart what, uh, adding to what Prakash Kamle also informed. And the basic thing, you know, starting from where Rangappa stopped, you know, Rangappa was rightly mentioning it has affected almost all the economies in the world and almost all the sectors and all the sections of the society, you know, but the magnitude as such, right, the magnitude as such is differs. When we say magnitude differs, it depends on various factors like the economy's dependence on the global trade, the economy's dependence on tourism, the economy's dependence on the external financing. So this is how exactly the economies are affected based on their dependence on the rest of the world. And when we speak of the impact on the different sections of the society, it is impacted basically depending on whether they are working in the organized sector or whether they're working on the unorganized sector, whether they're a salaried class or whether they're a daily wager, whether the resources, what is the resources at their disposal? And depending on the country in which he is living, depending on the social community from which he belongs to, depending on the community networking, so the impact depends. So what I wish to say here is the impact, though is there almost all over the world, on all the economies and all the sectors, the magnitude as such differs depend on various factors. And net result, all of us know poverty has increased, unemployment has increased, inequality has increased, not only within the economies, but between the economies also. And you know, good number of studies have already started, you know, to what extent the rich states will be benefited, rich states will be affected, poor states uh, will be affected. You know, good number of studies has already come out of it. But here, you know, the as I told you, because uh, time is also given as 15 minutes try to concentrate purely on what exactly will be the strategies because uh, much of it has already been discussed by the Prakash Kamble, how exactly on the various sectors it has been affected. You know, earlier when the prime minister spoke, he spoke of one important thing, you know, when he came on 24th, right, when he addressed the nation on 23rd, you know, most important thing that which he said was, Jan hai to jahan hai. So he meant to say life is more important than livelihood at that point of time. But later, right, but later, you know, when Modi ji came in the third time or so after the lockdown, he he told to the entire India, Jan bi or Jahan bi. He meant lives as well as livelihood is important. Why exactly did Prime Minister change the strategy as such? First and foremost thing, the answer for it probably lies in the India's workforce structure. As all of you are aware of it, Right now in India, 550 crores of the workforce out of, out of which 92% are dependent on the unorganized or informal sector and only 8% are dependent on the organized or formal sector. When such being the case, probably Modi ji was right in saying Jan B or Jahan B. But you know, where exactly was the change in the strategy? You know, during the strategy, the first strategy that what they thought was we will try to break, right? We will try to break the chain of COVID-19 by staying at home. So lockdown was announced. 
stay where you are was the first mantra when you say stay where you are you know the general economics basic principle was breached what was the general basic principle we always felt right people should work for their livelihood people should work for their livelihood when we said stay where you are and the economic lockdown is there lockdown is there so what the government meant government itself prevented you don't work right now right don't work if possible work from home which is for the 7 or 8% out of which only 2 or 3% can work from home the rest of you right don't work now life is more important that was the initial strategy to break the covid 19 but what exactly made them to change the strategy was because you know much of the individuals like majority of the individuals are in the unorganized sector so now you know what exactly when the government thought was in this 21 days right and even when they extended it further to up to 40 days so by that time the covid 19 chain would be broken and then the indian economy could be back on rails but it did not happen so what exactly was the change strategy you know when you stay at home the government has to provide them right government did provide them free ration right free provisions to them and little money right little money for their day to day our needs and of course the essential services at the doorsteps but you know it could not be continued for long because you know majority of the indians depend on the unorganized sector for their livelihood so what people also did you know that money the which the government gave probably was not that adequate so either they utilized right either they utilized the savings or borrowed little from their friends who were also in difficult situation and you know when, they, when there is a prolonged lockdown they cannot sustain so that was the issue because you know at that point of time right uh, the government thought they could break and even the health ministry also says if at all if we had left by april 15 the covid 19 would have been there by 8.5 lakh infected persons would, have, would be there in india but you know luckily that did not happen and now we have we are in a better position so we are unlocking that is what the government is saying but because now we you have some uh, medicines with you which was not there earlier okay so now the important strategy has changed right the strategy has changed earlier it was lockdown trace test treat quarantine and search the primary cases now they have gone ahead and said we will right we will un- co co exit right co covid exit we will start from that and the exit right the exit has begun already exit phase 1 has begun exit two phase is already on the phase and you know now earlier what exactly happened was when this when the people stayed back at the home it was basically mid nobex so whatever was required right whatever was required whatever was essential whatever was need of that day people catered to only that the taste changed the preference changed right the pattern of consumption also changed of course the distribution also because of all this so what exactly is now will this you know these questions were also raised by the registrar and even rangap also will life return to the normal right will life return to the normal will the world be the same can we predict the new equilibrium if at all if it is not the same that is also very important because or can we gear up to the new normal so all these are the important questions that which looms large in front of all of us because you know the major issue right the major issue now is now to change it from jaan jaan hai to jahan hai now jaan bhi aur jahan bhi this is the crux right this is the crux of it but you know when the questions are raised right will the pre covid situation pre covid normal come back we really don't have the answer but one thing is there but it will not come back right there will be a new equilibrium there will be a new, new equilibrium in the coming days to come how it will be that it is very difficult to say because it is full of uncertainties galo right now so what the strategy right now you know strategy right now is let us revive the business right let us covid exit right co exit they call it so co exit we are trying now phase 1 is over phase 2 we are now trying so now what they are saying let us start working right let us start working so let us maintain the fiscal distancing wear mask in the public places and in the workplace and then let us give more importance to the hygienic and uh, hygienic key so that you know new sanitizers wash your hands so this is the issues so when the new strategy has come right when the new strategy has come 
So now there is a possibility right now, you know, from past a week or so on the media and the people are discussing, will there be a lockdown again in Bangalore? Why exactly this discussion is coming? Because now the cases are increasing. So people have started, you know, when there were very less cases, we went in for lockdown. When there is an increased cases, can we again, can the government think of going again for the lock? For the lockdown of the economy. So this is the issues that which looms large here because what people are saying is you know, people were, people have started mixing together so it has increased the infection spread also and it will also the probability is it may also increase or put the pressure on the health expenditure of the government too. But here the crucial issue is now you know the co-exit has started the exit phase one is already there we cannot go back also because, you know, majority of us, majority in the, in the Indians depend on the informal sector. You know, it's very difficult for them, right? When we say it's very easy, let the economy go for the lockdown. You know, this 93% of this, 92, 92% of the persons, you know, the amount of struggle which they undergone, right, which they undergone is straight in front of our eyes. You know, it has touched our heart, but it did not touch when they were here. So all these are the issues, right? All these are the issues. Now, what exactly the issues that arises to the change strategy when we change the strategy you know the important issues that we'll raise is you know uh, earlier you know Kamble also was mentioning this about the dependence on mg narega has increased because the government has said yes we are giving you more allocation what will happen now the migrant workers have gone back right the migrant workers have gone back to their villages to their towns from which they hail and what exactly is happening now is two important possibilities may emerge out of it you know, even I try to do a little uh, primary study on this, taking the telephone number from the persons who came to the construction of my uh, house some two years back. So I just contacted each one of them and tried to get their phone numbers of their friend. You know, what I understood from them is 25% of the migrant workers, though the sample was not that large, but still, you know, I can draw some conclusions out of it, which says, you know, 25% of them said they will never come back to Bangalore. And, you know, 30% of them said, you know, we are very uncertain right now to answer that. We cannot answer that. It's a very uncertain uh, situation. And only 45% of them said, yes, if the jobs reopen, if the economy reopens, if the jobs are there, we are happy to come over. So what does it say? There are some portion of the population, right? If it is 25, 20 or 30, whatever the number may be, they will be at their places. So what will they do? Will they depend on the MG Narega? So what the government is saying is we have increased the allocation, right? Register, take the job card, work. Fine. But will all of them can be accommodated or will of them, all of them go to the MG Narega or will some of them go back to the fields to work? Because if you check the, uh, uh, I did not uh, see whether the Kamble had those figures. If you check the data, now, you know, more number of uh, seeds and fertilizers have been purchased this year. Even in the particular regions where exactly the migrant workers hail. It is because some portion of the migrant workers are back to their fields. So what will happen at this point of time is the dependency on agriculture, right? The dependency on agriculture will increase, right? Dependency on agriculture will increase. Already India is suffering from the disguised unemployment in the agriculture. That being the case, when there is more, right? When there is more percentage of the population which will depend on agriculture, what will happen to the productivity? What is the way out, right? What is the way out? So these are the issues that which will emerge in front of the Indian economy for the revival. And another crucial thing is, you know, then uh, the important thing is, you know, when we speak of the MSMAs, right, MSMAs, the crucial thing is increase increase shifts, the number of shifts. Will the space uh, that which the factories have is enough to do all this? Or the issues of taking precautions, when they take the issues of precautions, say, will it not increase the cost of production? And, you know, when the labor issues are also there, Will they go in for partial mechanization also? When we say partial mechanization, I mean to say because MSME definition has changed, right? MSME definition has changed now. So there is the same common definition for both service and manufacturing sector. One more advantage is not just the investment, but even the turnover also matters now. So taking under the guise, you know, a little bit of uh, much more mechanization to solve the problems of uh, increase in the cost of production or increase uh, the shortage of labor, so these are the possibilities and what will happen for the employment generation. So these are the issues that which I'm just posing, uh, which are in front of us. And you know, the real estate, it's very easy to say, yes, we will revive the real estate so that the entire economy will 
rejuvenate but there are lot of supply chain disruptions which has made it very difficult when we say it has become very difficult the crucial issues are you know look at what is the cost of each brick today each brick which was just 5 rupees 550 rupees 550 per brick uh, now today has costed around 9 rupees to 10 rupees a brick and each k each bag of cement has is costing around 100 rupees more each uh, ton of steel is costing around 700 to 1000 rupees more so these are the issues then will it be viable for the uh, real estate individual right one who depends on selling the houses constructing and selling of the houses will it be viable and will it be viable for the individuals right who construct their houses will it be viable for them because they have a limited resources with them or will they postpone it right now we don't need it let me just go ahead and think of it let like, little later let me postpone the, the construction of uh, the houses so then what what will happen to the employment generation and another crucial thing is so in the service sector some of the jobs which are lost right which are lost cannot be regained also there are certain possible there is the possibilities of such thing also here because you know consumption of some services may be right permanently lost say for example every month once in a month if they are going for some religious places or some tourist places it doesn't mean in the july and august when we open up completely that they will go in for a trip four or five times not just one time because you know that may not happen and the preference the taste may have changed okay let me go yearly once instead of monthly once because now staying in hotel may not become another two three years these sectors you know may lose the jobs permanently or temporarily so these are the issues right these are the issues that which we have to take care and moreover what's happening now the shift is towards the digital economy online education online shopping online payment yeah but who is doing it again think on that and the instances of the child killing themselves the suicides in the cochin and calcutta is the bare examples let us not push them too hard at this point of time because you know cynic says you know many are using many youths are using tiktok whatsapp you know what's the problem they are using the facebook why cannot they come online for education no it is not as that you know check the data how many are using this type of social websites also or what are the feeds of those individuals who really don't have let us not make the exclusion a reality right now we are towards the inclusive growth sapta sath sapta vikas is the goal mantra of the government you know when unless and until the infra is provided right unless and until the basic infra is provided it becomes very very difficult and moreover the digital frauds have increased digital frauds have increased there is no safety net for it so these are the issues that which i am seeing it which are uh, looming large so let me quickly move around you know i will take another two or three minutes, more minutes solutions for this there are good number of issues which i have listed out another 10 to 12 more uh, such issues are already there right so i have just listed out them what are the important issues that which we uh, which arises at this point of time so what will be the solutions you know already uh, kamle has given a list of solutions adding to what it is because i have few of them included here so i will leave them and i will add i will add to what he was telling you know relief for the vulnerable right relief for the vulnerable those individuals who cannot work now we are restricting those who are above 60 years let them not go out right so what will happen to them so you give the relief to them give them more money right if at all if they are getting some pension right age or uh, old age pension see that you enhance that right now because enhancing it in terms of 1500 rupees may not be enough because we are preventing them right now don't to work so that should be the major agenda right that should be the major solution part number 1 in that issue and then restore the hope the most important thing is you know unless and until you kindle that hope right that we can because you know many are saying how many years it may continue when we will get the medicines when whether we will get it or not or it may not happen so many issues are there people are really have tried and you know recreate rekindle restore the hope in them and you know using this right using this situation reform all the sectors right reform all the sectors so that that will help the indian economy in the long term also when i say reform the sector the most important thing is probably krishna raj will continue with that let us move towards sustainable green economy at this point of time when we reform reform the sectors in such a way that it will also lead to the green economy and then you know try to recover right recover reboot and restore the economy right we let us reboot it and restart the economy with a new modes of techniques of production which will have to we should move towards a sustainable green economy and one more thing you know 
uh, we keep on asking from where the money come from you know india is probably should lead not being becoming you know it is not because in spite of this disruptions by china i strongly felt that india should lead this and request the world leaders right wherever the more additional because you know huge amount of money is spent on the defense so why not the economists think on this why not uh, the, uh, you know india itself lead this by example asking the world economists to cut down the defense expenditure for this two years right to cut down the defense expenditure for two years so that the same can be spent to come out of this covid 19 if all the economists come together and do it it's not a difficult thing it's also very easy and resources will be also available then vulnerable section can be taken care easily the world economy can rejuvenate then there will be no negative fallout right it will be a pause immediately we can come out of it the economy cannot will not be moving towards the recession and now another uh, one or two i'll just say and bind up i know time there is less very less amount of time and you know train uh, the migrant workers now you know the migrant workers have come some of them are semi skilled some of them are skilled and majority of them are unskilled let us train them utilizing this opportunity because they will be forced to stay because they are apprenticed they have apprenticeship if at all if we come back to the towns they may be facing again because they are heartbroken they are hurt they may not come back immediately so let us train them where they are so let us see you know what will be the possibility new possibility that will uh, come out and let us strengthen the supply chain and moreover you know when we strengthen the supply chain let us not depend on one supplier right china right because china is the sole supplier of many goods in the uh, chemicals in the electronics in the uh, solar uh, equipments so why don't we have multiple supply chains so that will help maybe it will be costly today but it will help in the long run and so with this you know a good number of things are there let me not exceed because two more speakers are there so i thank the organizers i thank uh, professor rangappa for giving me this opportunity to share my views on this i also thank each one of you for your patient listening i know it has unmuted even if it was not unmuted probably would have had given me a patient listening thank you thanks a lot thank you sir thank you within uh, within a given time you have covered wide uh, variety of issues and also some strategies thank you for that now over to uh, krishna ras sir i request uh, professor krishna ras uh, to to give his views on uh, environment and sustainable development in this uh, covid period please sir over to uh, thank you sir. thank you thank you professor uh, k b rangappa for uh, inviting me to this uh, panel discussion uh, professor uh, halse honorable vice chancellor the registrar of the university the registrar evaluation uh, dr anita uh, she was my former colleague uh, my colleagues at the department of economics i was part of that uh, department earlier uh, uh, dr rangappa professor suchitra now new faculty have joined uh, i think uche gowda uh, selvi and others and uh, my co panelist honorable co panelist professor uh, prakash kamle sir professor bagil koti and my good friend professor keshav so already um, uh, many issues have been uh, thrown out uh, by eminent scholars on uh, the broad issues of economy and uh, economic development in future so the topic uh, the they have chosen for this uh, panel discussion is really impressing me Uh, how to make uh, the indian economy is more productive and healthy in the post covid period this is a very challenging topic uh, but uh, still we try to do uh, justice to this topic so shall i share my uh, uh, ppt so that uh, others yes, can sir. also uh, with yes, yeah ah, yes sir sir can share sir no issues yeah please sir uh, okay one minute i, I am finding out uh, my ppt
So can you uh, see this PPT? Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Good. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So the topic uh, uh, I am uh, given is that uh, post COVID-19 environment and sustainable development. Already Professor Keso has mentioned uh, about the green economy and sustainable development. Uh, I will focus on those areas at the later stage. So the structure of my presentation as follows. Uh, first, I would like to analyze the issues uh, of COVID-19 and globalization, how they interact each other. And uh, the second issue is that capitalism is a part of globalization and how it uh, affect the environment and health and how it creates the environment and health risks. And uh, I touch upon uh, the recent data available from the LA University, uh, that is Environmental Performance Index 2020 with respect to India. Then uh, I also discuss a little bit about the post COVID-19 and policy discourse towards economic development and uh, how uh, our behavioral uh, changes are required towards uh, meeting both the ends, that is survival as revival, that is protecting environment and also make development more sustainable one in the post COVID period. And uh, how we can shift the economic development from capitalism to sustainable development. So I would like to give a, a brief introduction about the uh, world economy as also Indian economy. The global GDP, GDP is about 84.93 trillion US dollar. And uh, the Indian prime minister is also aspiring to achieve 5 trillion economy by 2025. But uh, given the pandemic and uh, given the economic setback we uh, experienced in recent period, uh, this may be the uh, major hurdle for achieving uh, Five trillion economy, and uh, yes, others, including two panelists, they have mentioned our economy uh, and GDP growth rate has been nose dive to nine one point nine percent in the coming years. Uh, is it is already forecasted by World Bank and uh, IMF. So, on the one hand, uh, the uh, the track in which we were traveling in the uh, in terms of economic development, we adopted in recent years, that is called as LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization, under the capitalist, capitalism, broadly capitalism. So uh, the economy was given highest prior, priority over the environment. So this has created uh, uh, unprecedented risk and uncertainties in the 21st century. These risks I can combine into uh, health, economic, and environmental risk. The, there are three types of risks. Health risks we are already facing, economic risks, and environmental risks we have been facing. Economic risks are there, but nobody has studied uh, 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 in, the, in terms of uh, how these two health and environmental risks are uh, much, much uh, more, much higher than the economic risks. So I made a, a, a moderate attempt to uh, discuss all these uh, inter inter interconnections and also uh, how they interplay. So it is well established, established fact that capitalism led to econo uh, led economic uh, globalization, which integrated the world economy and uh, society through ICT and low cost air transport has been the main source of faster transmission of pandemic disease like SARS and novel COVID-19 by means of international travel. One needs to understand where uh, the COVID uh, started uh, spreading to all the countries. It is due to international travel. Why international travel? Because uh, we have a free movement of laborers after the globalization because of uh, 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 the whole world is globalized. So the virus would have been ended either in UN Institute of Virology, some predicted that even America predicts that uh, this is a man-made virus uh, from the UN Institute of Virology, or UN uh, wet market, if it is uh, uh, biological virus, it is uh, on its own, 
it has emerged itself if the international travel is not involved so wet markets uh, in china they sell wild animals and their meat so most probably most of the scientists they predict that uh, these viruses emerge out of wet markets so the pandemic is mainly attributed to economic globalization led international travel so what is the extent of this uh, pandemic the pandemic has been uh, continuing for the last 6 months it may continue uh, for next 6 months we don't know but uh, the uh, the growth rate of pandemic is is very dangerous trend which is going on i, I can say that this exponential growth is taking place in recent th- period especially in india in brazil and other countries even in usa so if the virus grows at this rate it is very difficult to have infrastructure health infrastructure as well as uh, other infrastructures so if you look at this virus uh, the uh, the virus uh, is mainly causing uh, the problem in our bronchitis or lungs what we call it so this uh, virus is mainly attacking our lungs see the lungs requires oxygen very frequently every second we need oxygen without oxygen we cannot survive so uh, th- this is this is showing this virus is showing how the oxygen is very important for our survival either to we have not given importance to oxygen here after after at least we should give importance to oxygen that is environmental good oxygen environmental services so we have given importance attached importance to economic development rather environmental resources so even after 6 months the entire world is struggling hard with an unprecedented challenge of understanding scientific sources of covid-19 such containing its pandemic and discovering drugs to root it out currently a combination of antiviral drugs with hydroxyl chloroquine and uh, azithromycin is used to treat the disease so this is the major drug which is used throughout the world but different protocols uh, have been adopted by different uh, countries uh, you know that um, uh, in recent uh, period uh, they have mentioned some uh, drugs new drugs which can be uh, used for curing this uh, virus uh, so it is evident that the spread of new infectious diseases are basically involving human animals and plants one needs to understand why and where this virus emerged this is because of interaction of human animals and plants so basically this is a environmental issue where we are polluting the environment and the environment is changing day by day like climate change and it is creating more and more problems for the earth and survival of the human beings so coronaviruses are single stranded rna viruses that can infect not only humans but also use variety of animals as well so sars earlier version of sars you know that um, is originated from the bats and consuming various animals as food stuffs like bats snakes cats mice rats dogs pigs etc so these animals are um, uh, consumed in uh, china market i have seen china market several times i went there and uh, they eat even uh, live snakes and they eat several uh, uh unbaked uh, 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 uh this one uh, uh consume uh, the food without um, uh, baking it so however the change in the pattern of infectious diseases is mainly attributed to the change in the behavioral pattern of society such as production consumption technology and microorganisms of the earth so when the uh, economy shifts to a higher production higher consumption uh, there is a change in the microorganisms e- even in the environment so that is causing a change in the atmospheric changes change in the microorganisms so that that always generate new viruses new bacteria and new other challenges to human beings and their survival if say for example nowadays many patients many people are suffering from cancers and other Uh, deadly diseases earlier it was not there why because of these changes in the atmospheric environment and also other uh, 
changes in the production and consumption. So the climate change led by capitalism has rapidly transformed the, transformed the earth environment in the 21st century and allowed the growth of foodborne diseases, coronavirus, and advent of antimicrobial resistance. So the scientists face the uphill tasks to unravel the mystery of secrets of coronavirus by reopening the books on infectious disease to save the humanity from the destruction. So the, some of the scientists there, they have closed the books of infectious diseases. Now they need to reopen because the coronavirus, no scientific study has come out with a medicine or a antiviral drug so far. So therefore, uh, the, uh, there is a uphill task for the scientists to find a new drug for this new disease. The very survival of human being is challenged by COVID-19 pandemic in recent time. So now let us understand how capitalism is creating problem for uh, human survival in the world. So the capitalism is defined as production for profit. It is very simple. Capitalism is for profit only. So it, is, it creates competitive market. Capitalism is an economic system in which private profit maximization is its virtue. It relies on impressive productivity and growth rate and does not care for environment and sustainable development. Everyone now first knows. Most of the dirty industries are in developing countries like India and China. If you look at the environmental performance index of China and India, they are worst affected countries in terms of environment. Why? Because the developed countries have shifted their industries to developing countries. As a result, the developing countries are facing a huge stocks of environmental problems. So the capitalism promoted huge production, enticed consumerism, created environmental and health risks, and uncertainties along with inequality in income distribution. So if you look at the health and environmental risks or environmental pollution, so already by statistics have been given that uh, the 10 million coronavirus cases and already 5 lakh deaths. And uh, in uh, India, there are 15,000 deaths already. Uh, the growth, the COVID cases are increasing, the spike is more in recent times. So when we uh, look at these uh, death, these death rates, COVID death rates, compared to environmental death rates, very, very meager or very, very less. If you look at the WHO data on air pollution related deaths in the world, an estimated 4.2 million premature deaths globally are linked to ambient air pollution, about 1.2 million deaths due to air pollution in Delhi, Worldwide ambient air pollution account for 29% of all deaths, 17% of all deaths and disease from acute lower respiratory infection, 20% of all deaths from stroke. If I take only air pollution, if you take water pollution and other pollutions, the death rates may be very high. So 43% of all deaths and disease from chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, pollutants like uh, particulate matter, ozone, nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide, and the, they, they pose serious problem, health problems. But the issue is here that the COVID, uh, in case of COVID, it is uh, death is instant, death is occurring. But in case of environmental uh, pollution or environmental disease, the death may take place more time. The death requires more time. So here, therefore, people pay attention to present death our present life rather than future life. So this is uh, equivalent to the concept called discounting. So we, if we have money in our hand, we, that is more important than we earn money in future. The present income is more important than future income. Likewise, the present life is more important than future life. That is the issue here. So therefore, people attach more importance to COVID deaths rather than environmental related deaths. So after saying this, if you look at after unlock one, uh, even um, uh, uh, lock, lockdown, people used to neglect uh, the uh, government policies of unlock, even uh, 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 distance should be maintained. People are not caring. So it shows that people don't pay attention to the death rates also. Now, death rates are very high, but still people are not 
uh, showing any um, uh, um, concern for the death rate. So this is this needs to be understood by the sociologist why people are behaving like this. So every part of the heart, if you take uh, air pollution, heart or soil pollution, and hydrosphere, water pollution, atmosphere. Every part of the heart is digged up. Every part and segment of the heart is polluted by the capitalist. And this has created a huge environmental risks throughout the world. So in order to prove my point, I have taken recent uh, environmental performance index 2020 these there are 180 countries have been selected for um, uh, to estimate the environmental performance index you look at india and china so india india is in white color and uh, the european countries they are in uh, um, blue dark blue color so their performance environmental performance is much much better than the india india is highly polluted country I'll say what is that uh, environmental uh, pollution index. The framework is developed by the LA University. The framework organizes 32 indicators. There are 32 indicators and 11 issues. There are 11 issues, uh, two policies. One is environmental, eco sorry, ecosystem vitality. They have given 60% score to it and environmental health, 40% score to it. So these are the environmental health aspects. These are the ecosystem vitality aspects. So this shows that uh, the level, each level, the percentage of the total score. So how the different countries are performing in their environment, whether they are performing well or not performing well is based on the score they, uh, they score it. So come to this uh, environmental performance index 2020. India is ranked 168 country out of 180 country. So this was very, very poor performance in terms of environment. It, it is here, 168 country. It is with Ghana and other IT and uh, Afghanistan, Myanmar, last 20 countries. So this was the, where are we in terms of environmental protection? If you give more importance to economic development, then what about the environmental costs, environmental performance? So ultimately, consumption, con consumption is a function of both market good and non-market non good, that is environmental goods. Without environmental goods, we cannot survive. Based on market goods, we cannot survive. We need environmental goods. So its score out of 100, it 27.6, very, very poor performance. So in 2006, I have compared uh, a 2006 environmental indicator. Earlier, it was 47.7 score out of 100. And out of uh, 132 countries, India was standing at 118. So it is. it means that after 2006, environmental for performance index is nose diving, it is reduced over a period of time. It means that as we increase economic activity, environmental performance index has come down uh, heavily down. So what EPA indicates? India has low EPA score that indicates the need for sustainability of ecosystem with high priority focus on critical issues such as air pollution. You know that most of our Indian cities are highly polluted, especially particulate matter. In Bangalore, we cannot breathe. People every week go out of the uh, Bangalore city to some good environment, uh, to the parks, national park and others to get the oxygen, isn't it? So water pollution, water quality is highly affected throughout the India because of uh, water uh, quality degradation. Biodiversity is affected and climate change is very, very high in case of India. So the question arises in our mind is that can we sacrifice the environmental sustainability for economic security or vice versa? We have poverty, of course. So shall we give importance to economic security over environmental sustainability? Or shall we give environmental sustainability priority over economic security? No, it is not possible. We need to achieve both. We need to eradicate poverty. We have to create employment opportunity. At the same time, we have to protect environment. That is called sustainable development. 
so we need development at the same time we need to protect environment so in this way we in the last uh, several years the priority of the policy in india indian government is that we have given importance to economic development rather than environmental sustainability so environmental economist including me i work uh, in the uh, expert committee of central and state pollution control board uh, even uh, the uh, green uh, tribunal national green tribunal so the environmental policy plays an important role so where environmental policy plays an important role so we estimate the cost of environmental risks and the benefits of reducing them if you reduce the environmental risk there are benefits if you increase the environmental risk there are costs so the cost of risks mitigation or remediation options and distribute it has distributional effect therefore we need to reduce the risks of environment improve the benefits then only we can achieve environmental environmentally sustainable development so i don't want to uh, take much of uh, your time uh, that uh, you know that the greenhouse uh, uh, gas emissions and uh, in uh, 1930s there was a uh, greenhouse gas called chlorofluorocarbon which is used in the, in our fridge and uh, most of the aerosols and also uh, cold refrigerators and others so when we when the scientists discovered that in 1930s it was uh, considered as a man made achievement so in 1980s it has destroyed the um, uh, ozone layer so likewise we don't know what will happen uh, today we are making economic development at a faster rate but we do not know tomorrow what will happen like coronavirus many viruses may emerge for the future generation so their cost uh, its cost is very high like us we are paying the cost so therefore we need to be very uh, careful Uh, with uh, with regard to conservation of environment we need to respect the environment because ultimately the economy or depending or derived from environment so when we talk about uh, the economy and environment so because of covid the environment is healing a lot in recent times the environment has been improving a lot i got some data from uh, central pollution control board especially the river water quality and also urban air quality so the urban air quality and uh, river uh, water air quality is improving a lot without investment any investment so earlier uh, the government used to invest a lot for the purifying the water and cleaning the environment and other, other thing but lockdown has helped a lot to purifying the air and also uh, the environment overall the environment is healing a lot so some of the examples i can give is that uh, uh, consequently a drastic healing of the environment or nature is observed and covid 19 has made us to think how nature is very important for our day to day living for the first time no incident of forest fire in national parks in the summer and uh, there was a, uh, this summer was very cool wildlife finds freedom for the first time and roam freely without affecting the human habitat as tourism industry is shut down number of human animal conflicts or deaths have come down the flock of uh, flamingos in mumbai the air quality has drastically improved in mega cities pm 2.5 fell by 70% that is causing uh, the respiratory respiratory disease or asthma pollution and uh, greenhouse gases emissions have fallen across continents halt of because of halt of air travel industrial production reduction in use of coal and fossil fuels transport alone contributes 23% of global carbon emissions so river water quality has improved with the non functioning of industries and stoppage of fluent effluent discharge dolphins are spotted in ganga river after 30 years ganga is fit for drinking in haridwar as per uttarakhand pollution control board clean beaches and seas so these are all the drastic improvement after the two months lockdown uh, we witnessed so these are the some of the images of european space agency uh, it is in china so earlier before pandemic and after lockdown so this is the a drastic improvement in the air quality a and b picture this is the drastic improvement in all types of air quality no investment to bring pollution under control so this is uh, this images of european space agency in france and also in spain before and after 
uh, uh, the lockdown. So the air quality in the atmosphere has been drastically improving. Nice nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide levels have dropped drastically over Europe. So you look at the visibility of pictures. So earlier uh, the um, uh, there was a uh, um, uh, in Delhi you can you, visibility is so low. After the lockdown, you visibility see the uh, India Gate uh, visibility is very high. You look at the New York City, this is New York, this is uh, Eiffel Tower, France, this is, uh, yeah, this is New York City. So you can see from the uh, visuals that the air quality has been improved a lot during this uh, lockdown period. So I skipped some of this. So in this way, what we need to understand is that environment is very important for economic development. At the same time, economic development is also important, but how to balance both. Therefore, we need to balance both in a such a way that, you know that um, uh, 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 the economic costs are increasing these days because of traffic congestion. See, for example, in order to travel uh, from one place to another place in Bangalore city or Delhi or Mumbai, it requires a lot of time and a lot of our uh, 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 energy uh, that is, petrol or diesel. So that is the environmental cost or economic cost, uh, which is imposed on the society. So at the same time, the benefits are also, are also decreasing for a period of time because of uh, the increasing cost of production. If you look at the farmers, uh, the, they always blame that uh, the cost of production has increased. However, uh, they, they are not getting remunerative price. As a result, uh, they are forced to leave for urban cities. Likewise, it is happening. So the costs are increasing because of uh, uh, the capitalistic economy. So how to make economic development which is long, sustainable one? COVID-19 will shape economic losses through supply and demand affecting investment, production, household consumption, and international trade. Already Professor Keshav and Professor uh, um, uh, Kamleser have explained what are the sectors which are affected by, by the uh, lockdown due to COVID. So the production cost is increasing. You look at uh, after COVID period also, the production cost is increasing because of labor issues and uh, not non-availability of supply chain. The profits are fast plummeting, reduced. So making every one of us to earn more to lead the market-driven life. So in order to buy purchase or buy or purchase things, we need to earn more in the market-driven life. Say, for example, in order to buy, buy a site or a, buy, buy a home or house, so we, you need to have a lot of savings, isn't it? Otherwise, you can't buy. So this creates greed rather than need. So the market-driven economy creates more greed rather than need. Now, consumers are buying fewer things during COVID period as they worry about virus and its spread and also the um, employment security. So need rather greed or want that makes our life more comfortable. So we need to give more preference to need rather than greed. So yesterday I was listening to Sudha Murthy. She went to some uh, uh, temple in uh, Uttar Bharat and she uh, declared that she does not want to buy saris here afterwards. Earlier she used to buy a lot of saris. So, human being does not require more uh, uh, market goods. They require, we require only few goods, but we showcase our wealth, our dignity, our prestige to others. Therefore, we, we buy many things. Other person has purchased cars, I should also purchase car like this. So therefore, we should focus more on need rather than greed or wants. So our solutions are in nature. Uh, our ancestors have shown how to live uh, a simple livelihood. So that makes less complex, less risky and healthy. So the world lost many opportunities to make development a sustainable one. After Indian independence in 1947, Gandhiji versus Nehru. Gandhiji favored uh, the uh, rural development, but Nehru favored uh, the uh, industrialization. So after the death of Gandhiji, uh, the Nehru uh, um, uh, policies prevailed. 
So Ambedkar wanted an equality, equality, equal society, equality of opportunities for all the sections of the community. Therefore, uh, the uh, the um, uh, the constitution which provides all these opportunities if it is properly implemented. So in 1972, Stockholm Conference on Human Environment that has dealt uh, uh, in um, a detailed way how our environment is affected throughout the world, how we need to improve the environment. Later, it, uh, the um, uh, United Nations organization created a uh, own, uh, expert committee under the uh, um, uh, uh, chairmanship of Gren, uh, um, uh, Norwegian prime minister in 1987. That is called World Commission on Environment and Development that uh, produced a, a path-breaking book called Our Common Future. So even though the international efforts were towards a sustainable development, because of the America's economic policies, that market-oriented policies, the, the whole world has to adapt the market-driven capitalism. So this has destroyed the uh, environment throughout the world. But the world economy is swayed by the market forces led by IMF and IBRD over uh, or UNO, which led to adoption of capitalism as format of economic development. So the COVID-19 teaches the lessons to the world community that humans must live their own limitations, in their own limitations. Humans must live in their own limitations. They cannot, uh, uh, they cannot control or change the environment because the environment ultimately de decides and determines the, uh, the um, uh, functioning of the economy and uh, human uh, existence. So therefore, uh, always nature dominates our society and economy. So therefore, economic development should be sustainable one and green economy should be one and equitable one also. So when we make economic development sustainable one, we are giving importance to both economic development as well as environmental conservation. So most of the European countries, uh, if you see the environmental index, most of the European countries have adopted this policy, green economy policies, sustainable development policies. Their environmental score is one, Denmark, Switzerland. So almost all the dirty, dirty industries are, came out of those countries because of stringent environmental regulations. But these poor countries like uh, um, uh, China and India, they got all the uh, FDI and these uh, industries, they are polluting their environment. So this is how the cost of pollution is increasing, the health costs are increasing, and we are facing this type of problem throughout the world today. So in order to conclude, the economic, environmental, and health costs are rising in recent years. Economic profits are plummeting, reducing under market economy. Therefore, survival and revival needs a different developmental approach. This approach should be sustainable development that makes economic development long lasting where both development and environmental conservation go hand in hand for productive and healthy India. I stop here and I come back if there are questions. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for a very elaborate and informative uh, and with different uh, kind of presentation, positive impact of this uh, COVID-19 on sustainability. Uh, with this, uh, just I request uh, Professor S.T. Bhagalikoti, sir, to share his views on behind the COVID-19 pandemic, policy choice for LD India. And, uh, sir, would you like to share any slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a presentation to make. Sir. A presentation to make. Sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, hello. Sir. sir. I, I have a presentation to make. I will share the screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chetan. Ah, yes, sir. Siddhappa Bhagal Kotiyan Tridhanodi, please. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please enable it. Right, sir. Please, sir. Show the slide, sir. So, Yelruku Namaskar. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Registrar Evaluation, Professor Rangappa, all my esteemed economics fraternity, Professor Kretaraj, Professor Professor Kamble, Professor Angappa, and other friends. In fact, uh, the, the theme given to me is the policy challenges in the health sector. 
I'm just uh, directly showing the screen, not going to the basics of how the virus spread and etc. Uh, let me begin with stating that epidemics have not been a new phenomenon either in the world or to any country of the world. And based on the contagious epidemics, many uh, health policies were shaped. In fact, Angus Deacon, in one of his uh, papers, he mentions that many epidemics, especially cholera epidemic, Spanish flu, etc., made the people to realize the importance of public health, and they designed the health systems that the germs caused diseases resulted in lot of investment in public health systems involving many other supplementary services like sanitation, nutrition, disease surveillance, etc. And Angus Keaton very clearly mentions that it is because of the investment in health which resulted in gains in life expectancy rather than gains in income. So as Professor Krishna Raja was mentioning, it is the non-income factors which have resulted in a higher quality of life to the people. Um, but however, India did not follow the route. It did not uh, give priority to the setting up of uh, health infrastructure. And it actually uh, lost the opportunity in doing that. Uh, Of course, specific containment measures were launched for various diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, etc. But there was very little investment in overall public health infrastructure, as I said, in like uh, sanitation, food security, nutrition, waste management, etc. So that was a kind of uh, loss to the country. As a result, death from contagious diseases is very high. If you see the chart, this is chart on the death from communicable diseases, the red bar shows India's figures and relatively relative to the world average or to the other countries, death from communicable diseases, that is in number per lakh population, the death is very, very high. Of course, the death from non-communicable diseases is higher in number, but compared to other countries, Indian deaths are low in case of non-communicable diseases. But in case of communicable diseases, the death, the death rate is very, very high. And this chart, which is based on the national health profile data, shows that the respiratory diseases like pneumonia, SARS, H1, N1, etc., they accounted for a larger proportion of deaths. That means even before this COVID pandemic arrived, India was suffering a lot from these kind of diseases. And this is the, an average to that. And uh, another thing is, the global health security, which is again a, uh, a international ranking made for the uh, country's preparedness uh, and uh, the prevention efforts, detection efforts, responses, et cetera, to the various diseases, shows that India is ranked at 57 out of 100. Of course, here, the ranking is a little opposite because higher the rank means greater the vulnerability. So India definitely is worse compared to Italy, China, United Kingdom, and United States. Let me tell you, these, state, these countries are those which have been worst affected by the pandemic, where the infection rate and the fatality rate is quite higher. And India's uh, health security index is quite low compared to these various countries. And more than that, India is also highly susceptible because of the poor immunity. And we all know that the UNDP calculated health development index is also very low as far as India is concerned. And because of poverty and heavy density, India has high chances of infection. Now, if you combine these two information, on one hand, we have high, lower health security. On the other hand, we have more susceptibility. So the chance of further spread of infection is very, very high. That is the worrying point for the health uh, sector. Now, what exactly is the uh, problems in the health sector? Because we are talking about the policy requirement. So to, in order to spell out the policy requirement, we need to tell what are the problems in the health sector. Basically, as I mentioned earlier, right from beginning in the post independence period, our health strategy was not in the right direction. Basically, the investment in the 
uh, uh, health sector was very very has been even today has been very very low in the total health spending i'm talking of total health spending not government spending alone the total health spending is calculated hardly at 3.6% of gdp this is very low compared to similar other countries of the world and government spending if you just take it out it is hardly below 1% and this chart shows the uh, the comparative picture of how health spending has been there the green portion shows the government support government expenditure and the yellow portion shows the out of pocket expenses that is what people spend on the health and if you see the government share in the health uh, expenditure is very low and government has left people to fend for themselves the out of pocket health expenditure is extraordinarily high in india accounting for almost 65% of health expenditure this is one of the reasons for high indebtedness of the households especially in the uh, poorer segments so what has happened because of this is the low priority accorded to health in expenditure has resulted in limited investment both in health infrastructure as well as health data let me again caution you we do not have even valid health data reliable health data to make the analysis in fact in one of the uh, interviews today that appeared in nature uh, website one uh, epidemiologist has stated that india has been underestimating its fatality rate the tests have been lower and compared to the population size whatever is reported is not right that is what he is mentioning so we don't even have proper data system to track what is happening as far as the health is concerned and the point is who spends how much and where it is being spent if you see these is the state governments which spend more the blue line represents the state expenditure and the brown line represents the central government expenditure and you see that the state governments spend more unfortunately all policy making is done by the center especially during this period of crisis the only center dictated and states had to follow the expenditures being done by the uh, states and states have limited resources at their disposal to cater to all requirements and another important point is where the spending is being done the spending is being done mainly in the curative aspects we have to we should have spoke focused on preventive aspects if the spread had not occurred if the uh, infection had not spread we should have, uh, could have spent on prevent aspects but unfortunately the spending is more on the curative aspects we try to seek solutions when the problem arises but we don't force the problem in, in fact as i was mentioning earlier there is no disaster management plan as far as india is concerned even if you look at the spending on pharmaceutical and other medical goods also which are the infrastructure equipment aspect there also our expenditure is quite low so spending is done by state governments who do not make policies and is spent mainly on period of care this is the uh, basic problem as far as health uh, spending is concerned apart from this the other concerns also as for uh, as uh, the niti ayoga uh, community is concerned the shortage of emergency healthcare infrastructure uh, and also other uh, facilities doctor to patient ratio is very low one doctor per around 15 population hospital beds to people ratio is also very low and for the whole of the population niti ayoga in i think in april it reported that there were hardly 40000 ventilators which is very very less and almost all pharmaceutical research and development is in the private sector making the medicines very costly for the general public then there is also problem of access to vulnerable people and remote regions health insurance is not a general generally accessible service there is significant data deficiency which i already mentioned and there is lack of coordination between different players there is government there is non government there is private sector there is public sector so there is no coordination between various players in the health sector as a result of which everyone is adopting a piecemeal approach even there is no coordination between different systems of medicines allopathic say something uh, ayush say something so this kind of uh, uh, the break between the various agencies has been making the problems severe now what are the policy choices now given the scenario i come to the policy choices i have two kinds of policy choices one is immediate and the other one is longer run choices for talking of the immediate policy choices the first one is stepping up health expenditure and we have to focus on it should have been preventive i'm sorry it should be preventive not curative focus should be on 
preventive component. But now, in the present crisis, we have to focus more on curative aspects as well. Then, coordination between various players should be increased. I said centers, states, local governments, public and private institutions, government and NGOs, alternate systems of medicines. The coordination has to increase. Even from between one country to another country, the coordination has to increase. This is necessary because the collective action has to emerge. Now, this is a common enemy. And against common enemy, all of us have to fight with our collective strength. So for this purpose, coordination has to be extended. There's an immediate concern. And more importantly, in the framework of Artha Nirbharata Abhyan, we have to tap the local resources. It may be indigenous knowledge, it may be community solidarity in designing a holistic strategy against future contagions. We need to uh, identify the uh, pieces of knowledge available in the uh, regions and use them for making the people believe that there is some support system available for them. If that psychosocial support is not given, then we may, find, we may just witness some more suicides in the days to come. So therefore, in order to strengthen the resilience of the people and the psychosocial health of the people, these local resources, community engagement should be taken into consideration. And of course, there is need of education and awareness. As uh, Professor Kesho was mentioning, there is to be self discipline about sanitation, about developing immunity, maybe by uh, going for uh, keeping ourselves fit, etc. And what is more important is public morale is to be uh, uh, heightened because. Even today, we see when we go to go to market, people are neither wearing masks nor maintaining distances. And what is worse is they are spitting everywhere. So such a kind of behavioral changes should be made known to the people. They should be punished, and some corrective action needs to be taken. These are in the immediate uh, arena. And what should be for a longer run? Now, I, as a uh, student of development economics, I very firmly believe that health should be a pure public good not a merit good as is being thought by the government right now. It should be a pure public good. And of course, the first one is increasing public expenditure, especially on institutions, personnel, and research and development. Government has to do that. Secondly, government has to relax regulations for setting up of more number of medical colleges. Now, Dr. B.M. Hegade says this is not me, but I support him because if more doctors have to come, more paramedics have to come, more nurses have to come, medical education has to be uh, 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 freed from the conditions. Okay, And there is a concept of what is called as barefoot doctors. I recommend that these barefoot doctors should be uh, you know, appointed to act as first contact consultation points. They are not treatment people. They only uh, give some generic prescription. They, they diagnose what has happened and refer to the higher uh, consulting uh, institutions. Now in uh, financial inclusion, you might have heard about banking correspondents who resolved the problem of last mile connectivity. So the same uh, role these barefoot doctors can play. Similarly, ASHA workers and Anganwadi workers have been used to a great extent in the current pandemic. Now there is a need to upgrade the ASHA workers also as the first concert contact and consultation points. And so that the people would again feel more secure as far as health requirement is concerned. But only thing is, physical security of ASHA workers and these people needs to be enhanced. And uh, what is more important is these two agencies, that is barefoot doctors and ASHA workers, can also strengthen the database, which we require for management of any health problem that may emerge in the future. And there is a need to create an automated and self-reported health database. Of course, now we have Arogya Setu. Arogya Setu can be customized so that the individual health records can be collected at a central place for the purpose of policy making, not for the benefit of any private uh, individual. And a robust health insurance system has to be created, which is acceptable to all persons who want it. And uh, policies promoting general well-being and disaster response mechanism also need to be stuck up. Along with this, these are the policies which are required, especially universal nutrition and universal sanitation are the ones which we have to focus if the such kind of contagions should not emerge. And in this time of health crisis, we should remember that the long-term prosperity of any country, including India, depends on saving lives, sustaining livelihoods, and supporting quality of life. And all policy prescriptions required for supporting these have to be considered. Now, uh, 
based on what my other friends said i just uh, jotted down few points while the presentations were going on so i have just made some of the points here just to link to what they said now what is necessary is when we talk of health now we are moving towards broader wellness aspect well being aspect now there are different kinds of uh, wellnesses as per uc davis of the world health organization he has mentioned about uh, seven to eight kinds of wellnesses emotional wellness financial wellness occupational wellness social wellness environmental wellness intellectual wellness physical wellness spiritual wellness etc so what i wish is we need to prepare policies where an individual's holistic well being is taken care of not merely medicine medical health or physical health doctor that could be the policy requirement that is required now now i conducted a survey of online learning of my own students and if i if you, if i just share with you some of the responses made by the students as far as the experience which they faced the pains which they underwent during the lockdown it is really frightening and even the plight of the teachers is still worse yesterday we saw a post wherein some of the contract lecturers were you know actually preparing murukus the eatables and selling them to just sustain the level so this kind of thing may result in some other bad things and uh, one more point which i have to make is now uh, we speak of uh, gdp recession gdp loss etc but what has happened is very recently the european union has estimated what would be the estimate of loss in terms of money uh, in terms of well being and what they found was the monetary loss because of loss of well being is higher than the drop in per capita income in fact they come to a, a conclusion that in european union compared to the uh, income loss the well being loss is three times higher so therefore we need to focus on more on the well being and health of the people and government should take a holistic measure of course it has to take everyone along with it the private public ngo alternate systems of medicine etc and do that okay so one one point is very clear pandemics are here to stay because of climate change which professor was was referring to and other behavioral aspects of our own uh, you know uh, makings the pandemics are here to stay but only thing is we have to take such actions where people will not become vulnerable in one of the reports published by undp entitled covid-19 and human development assessing the crisis envisioning the recovery in may 2020 this statement is made there is something deeper in the crisis it overlaps and interacts with other ongoing global tensions between people and technology between people and nature between haves and the have nots which were already shaping a new generation of inequalities what i would say this is my last uh, actually point what i would like to emphasize is that there is there are so many problems along with the corona it may be the inequality which professor shnaz was mentioning in terms of capitalistic uh, outcome it may be the climate change or it may be the poverty malnutrition etc which we have to take in totality so that the people's health improves and the well being also increases so i appreciate the department of uh, economics of davangere university for organizing this and giving me an opportunity i thank everyone for your kind presence and i solicit your comments and questions thank you very much dr rangappa over to you sir thank you sir thank you for your focus on uh, strategies for healthy india sir thank you and uh, now uh, chetan uh, uh, yeah, actually yes, the particip participant who wish to ask any questions please uh, uh, raise your hands i mean uh, the click on the raise hands uh, chetan i'll unmute them sir yeah yeah just uh, unmute uh, the such participant please yeah to begin with so i would i mean uh, Doctor Jishkek, uh, oh, sir, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Doctor yeah. Jisha, Jaya yeah, Sachche. Jisha, okay. Doctor Jisha, please, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Doctor V Rajkumar, sir, you can unmute yourself and ask the question, sir, if you have any question. Hello. 
any of the participants who have question you can voluntarily unmute yourself and ask the only condition is if someone is speaking please don't interrupt any participants if you have any question you can ask the only thing is uh, while someone is speaking please don't interrupt any participant have any question ರಂಗಪ್ಪ ಸರ್ ಚೇತನ್ ಸರ್ ಐ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಕನ್ ಐ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಐ ಹಾವ್ uh here uh, sir the first uh, resource person who actually spoke sir i think it is uh, professor prakash yeah prakash uh, sir yeah prakash sir uh, my first question is for uh, prakash sir sir uh, prakash sir uh, you actually mentioned sir uh, universal basic income must be given for all the for all the people that to in a dire circumstance as this and sir you also mentioned that the universal basic income must be around 7500 rupees per month now sir my question is i mean uh, already like uh, some financial aid was actually given when we speak when we actually speak about the financial aid which was given for widows it was like 500 rupees per month and like per month on per month basis it was given like for 3 months and even for the senior citizens also the amount which was given was 500 rupees per 3 months <coughs> here sir you are actually mentioning universal basic income of 7500 rupees per month yes yes my question is how how do you i mean uh, according to you how should the government actually finance sir okay 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 yes sir uh, 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 thank you very much uh, it's a very important question uh, already so far as financing is concerned my the uh, one of my friends uh, professor kusharaj also talked to about how finance can be mobilized uh, he talked about some diversion of uh, uh, revenue from defense to uh, uh, the uh, revival and uh, welfare of the society in addition to that we have option of raising loans and advances from uh, from local as well as global market and more important what we call it as helicopter money printing of money that can be brought about because this is emergency situation and in this emergency situation we should not uh, think of what we call it as a fiscal discipline and fiscal deficit like that and these are the sources uh, which the government is having Uh, so far as uh, 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 providing for the minimum minimum universal income is concerned because it is being practiced across the globe as a whole and you know, to that extent uh, you refer to some of the uh, assistance is given but it is exclusively inadequate and more assistance is required because uh, covid impact uh, 19 lockdown has impacted very severely and very badly and these are the sources with the help of which that is uh, helicopter money that is printing of new new notes then uh, raising loans and advances from the domestic market as well as international market uh, these are the sources which are available so far as raising the funds why the government is concerned thank you very uh, much uh, prakash sir here i have follow on questions oh, yes yes most uh, the follow on question is as as you i mean as the resource persons actually mentioned the production has taken a hit not only in india but all over the world yes yes so when production has taken a hit and if we resort to helicopter money it will invariably result in inflation yes so that is one thing and second thing is when we are actually thinking about borrowing about the uh, from the international market it is not only india which is suffering this pandemic yes entire world is suffering from pandemic yes in this context uh, when when enter when all the other international countries are suffering and when they are not able to take care of their own finances properly expecting from them would also be quite a over optimistic approach yes 
So in this context, uh, is the two ways of financing. One is helicopter money; it would result in inflation. Yes. And the second thing is, if we actually ask the other people, they themselves are facing the same problem we are facing. India being the fifth richest country in the world by GDP, are these two sources viable, sir? Uh, first of all, uh, so far as uh, helicopter money is concerned, yes, to some extent it will add to inflation. But but now survival of the people is very much important than the inflation. Uh, that inflation, in, inflation, and it is therefore uh, a little bit inflation can take place. But unless and until survival survival is there, that that problem of inflation has no meaning at all. So far as raising of funds is concerned, there are international institutions. IMF is there, uh, World Bank is there, uh, then uh, Asian Development Bank is there. They, those are ready to extend loans and advances. And some of the developed countries, their levels of income are significantly higher compared to India. They can they can uh, spare some part of the income they have. But international institutions are there. IMF is already ready to distribute financial assistance. Uh, World Bank is there. Asian Development Bank is there. Such developmental banks can also extend, and their help we can extract and utilize so far as the need for finance is concerned. Okay, over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if any other participant have any question, you can ask the question. Actually, you can. Everyone, uh, we have given permission. Like everyone can unmute themselves and can ask. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyone you wish to ask questions? Hello. Yeah. yeah, please. Good afternoon, sir. How the uh, uh, how the the COVID nineteen situation helped the poor laborers and poor wagers in their health and in in, in the current Indian economy? Pankaj Mishra, you know, to whom you are addressing your questions, please. Hello. To so, sir, sir. Yeah. Just please Sweet. repeat your questions. It is not properly audible, please. Sir, how the uh, COVID nineteen epidemic uh, uh, will uh, worsen? How much the Indian economy and uh, Indian labors and uh, Indian villagers who migrate to their states and home villages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your question uh, is. Professor Angga, I will just react. Like yeah, please. Sir, I will react. Yeah, yeah uh, see, uh, Mr. Pankaj. Actually, the kind and extent of impact on these vulnerable sections has been written very extensively, discussed also extensively in various fora. Now, as Professor Kesho was mentioning, the problem is how do we accommodate them in their native places? There are institutions created, and there, there are schemes. It may be under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana or MG Narega. how we can accommodate them there is of course the fear of disguised unemployment also but now it is the job of the government on the uh, at least for the, for a very temporary period to uh, you know pump more money to utilize these people people's capabilities and uh, bring about the uh, economic revival so that at the uh, what time there is economic revival and at the same time there is utilization of these people also that's how it can happen Thank you. So, so I had, sir. So I had. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, in uh, addition to what Professor uh, Bagil Koti sir has mentioned, right. at this at, at this juncture, the the government should adopt two types of approach. One is that uh, one is one is that um, uh, to create effective demand by pumping the money, uh, especially by creating more employment opportunities. through mg narega and uh, other employment opportunities on the other invest more investment is required so on the one hand uh, they have to create effective demand on the other hand invest more both can create the interaction see consumption there is a income in hand they purchase goods and services so when they purchase goods and services there will there will be production so otherwise there will be no production therefore the government is proactive under this untimely circumstance created by the covid and lockdown so uh, the uh, efforts made by the governments are uh, are highly pathetic both in health and as well as economic aspects sir just uh, let me supplement uh, some of the views particularly with respect to this migrant labor 
uh, very recently with the help of uh, some of our uh, students i conducted survey of about 100 uh, reverse migrants out of 100 reverse migrant that we surveyed almost uh, 65 of them have returned to their workplace in the remaining 35 just we asked how many of uh, them are willing to work in the mgnr ega only some two persons were persons are willing to work in mgnr ega so i mean to say that actually we are focusing more on mgnr ega mgnr ega may help uh, this reverse migrant but actually people who are who are who work in uh, some some urban centers and uh, those who return to their working uh, native places they they try to ascertain some other jobs than than working in the mgnr ega it is what i observed from my empirical survey conducted in some some central part of uh, some two to three uh, two to three to two to our uh, uh area sir please hello i ah, yes, am audible sir yeah uh, yeah if uh, the participant has any question you can ask otherwise uh, i shall have sir. some questions yeah yeah somebody is good afternoon sir yes yes sir i am shamla yeah tell hope me hope i am audible yeah 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 you, uh, you are audible shamla please please proceed uh, sir now the central government has announced uh, one nation one ration card yeah. seeing the destitute position of the uh, migrant workers right. i just wanted to know how far will that be helpful to the migrant laborers just by giving a ration card can we really uh, help them in all ways because uh, we have seen a, a very very bad condition of the migrant workers how far this Uh, a scheme of one uh, of course this is a very good step but i just want to know how far it this would uh, uh, help them professor rangappa i i will respond uh, yes sir please sir please. Uh, so far as uh, that one nation one card is concerned scheme is good scheme is good but at this moment whatever assistance that is being given or it was given to migrant laborers it was just inadequate take example actually it was decided 5 kilograms either wheat or rice and 1 kilo uh, dal to every person but it was given to that family as a whole it was just inadequate and supplementary to that only providing card is not sufficient what is necessary is to provide food grains and india have adequate supply adequate stock of food grains and this year also uh, that rabi will help us in contributing significantly to the stock of food grains that already we have therefore only scheme is not sufficient scheme is good but its implementation with the sincere rigorous and honest is uh, that is very much required because in the lockdown period also the assistance in, in terms of food grains under uh, garib garib scheme that was given it was just inadequate it was just inadequate it was just inadequate and that honesty sincerity rigorousness is required it was expected to be given to person wise but it was given to the uh, household or as a group wise and that is not sufficient and it is just unhuman so far as uh, our affection and our 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 approach towards the migrant labor and informal labor is concerned or to uh, professor angappa basically Sir. you know i will try to add to what uh, prakash was saying you know the basically the intention of uh, one nation one ration card was you know what all suffered you know you, you have seen how migrant workers suffered even many a times without food also they were at the mercy of the food givers whether they liked it or not they used to take it so that was the situation and many of them you know who couldn't reach out to them couldn't get the food also so now the government in order to boost the morale of them is saying you know by next march 31st 2021 they will give you a provision ration card which wherever you go as a migrant laborer right if uh, bihari comes to a karnataka also or he goes to kanyakumari also he should not be finding it difficult to take the same provision card ration card and take the provisions over there that is the intention of it along with it what is added is we also giving the subsidized rent affordable housing to them uh, that to also by next year that's what the government is planning if at all if they are able to give subsidized rent of the affordable uh, rent uh, for this migrant workers at the affordable prices then probably the morale of the migrant workers to come back and to work 
uh, back in the places in which they wish to work can be restored. That is the reason behind it. But moreover, this uh, one ration, one nation, one ration card was earlier thought of. But why they uh, said, you know, within this deadline, we are doing it because, you know, if at all, if many, can, many metropolitan cities are facing the shortage of labor, to assure them, so don't worry if something goes wrong. It's a part of your disaster management also, you know, don't be afraid if something, it should not happen, if at all, if it happens something also, be assured that with the same ration card that which you will be uh, getting it from your own place, right? Say from Bihar or from Uttar Pradesh, whatever ration card you have. So from the same ration card, you will be having the ration from uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, wherever you go. So that is the intention to it. If at all, if it is really implemented, then it will go a long way go. But identifying the poor by will be with the state government. That becomes a difficult because, you know, in Karnataka also, when we started giving the BPL cards, you know, this is again uh, basically a political patronage. Many of them in that locality feel that he should get all his uh, uh, villagers the ration cards so that he will become more popular. So these kinds of tendencies, if at all, if we cannot leave and if we cannot identify the real poor, again, it will not be successful. So these are there are certain issues, but the policy as such is good. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the supplement. Any other questions? Hello, excuse me, sir. Yeah. I am Gopi, sir. Uh, my question is uh, Professor Krishnaraj, sir. Sir. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, China has more population and uh, industries as well compared to our India, sir. Yes. Although it has secured uh, at a well position in the environmental performance rank, sir. Hmm. May I know the strategies of China uh, compared to our India, sir? Yeah. Very, With regards very, to this. Yeah. Yes, yes, a uh, very good question you have asked. Uh, the, uh, you, you see, the government uh, is totally different in China. You know that. It is an authoritative government, we call it. Uh, uh, they, have, uh, to, they have every say in every uh, uh, decision making. Either it is environment or, or in economic development or with respect to social sector development or any uh, matter it may concern to the government. So all the properties of China belongs to government. So they are on lease actually. Land is on lease, building is on lease, everything is on lease to the uh, owners, uh, to the uh, those who want to uh, do business. So uh, the, the China was highly uh, polluted country when compared to last, uh, uh, compared to today when last year, last 10 years. So the uh, proactive uh, action they have taken is highly commendable, highly commendable. So recently I've gone to China, especially I talked about uh, the issue, uh, the, uh, uh, we have a, a scheme called, um, uh, uh, what is that, uh, smart cities in India. So the present government wants to develop some cities, including Daungere is considered as one of the smart cities. So my, my question uh, uh, is that where are the smart cities now? So this program has been implemented a few years back, I think way back in 2016. Uh, but where are the smart cities? Where are the smart towns uh, we are seeing? So what lessons uh, India can learn from China? Uh, that was my presentation of the paper in uh, uh, China University, one of the China University. So uh, they have developed uh, industry sectors, clusters, where they call it. These clusters are keeping in view of the world environmental standards. So environment has been given highest importance in recent times when they are designing, whether it's a new township or it is a new, pro new industrial township or some other township, they give highest priority to environmental conservation. So say for example, one example I would like to give. So they, uh, they were uh, planting the uh, uh, young trees on the roadside when I was there. So these samplings were grown somewhere else. They are uprooted, uprooted and they are bringing to uh, cities and they are planting young trees by giving all the uh, support system. So likewise, their plan is totally different. 
not uh, we are lethargic in every aspect we are lethargic we have it is health environment economic development elevation of poverty giving employment opportunities they are very serious in every aspect they do it so that that shows their governance good governance so our governance cannot be compared with the governance of chinese so governance matters हेलो हेलो एनी अदर क्वेश्चन Otherwise, shall we conclude conclude this session now? Yeah, I think it is the time of because sir, it has okay. taken a lot of time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, thank you, thank you, all the uh, panelists for their valuable time uh, to to spend with all of us. Uh, just over to Chagoda. Just Chagoda. Okay, sir. sir. Hello, sir. Sir. Uh, request of uh, sir uh, madam to propose one of them hello ha uh, yes selve madam you can unmute yourself madam yes hello sir uh, you are audible madam rangappa sir you can unmute yourself yeah, yeah, you can madam Yeah, yeah, unmuted. Sir, madam, you can propose the word of thanks. Okay, sir. Good afternoon to all. Yeah. It is a great pride that Department of Studies in Economics, Davangere University, has organized a panel discussion on beyond the COVID-19 pandemic policy choice for a productive and healthy India through webinar. On behalf of Department of Economics, Davangere University, I thank Honorable Vice Chancellor. Professor S. B. Halse, sir, for his valuable message. Thank you, sir. Respected Registrar Professor Basavaraj Banakar and Respected Registrar Evaluation Professor H. S. Anita for guest speech. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am. I thank Professor Prakash S. Kamble, Professor of Economics, Shivaji University, Kolhapur, for his discussion on COVID-19 and Indian industry and agriculture. Thank you, sir. I thank Professor S. R. Keshav, Professor of Economics, Department of Economics, Bangalore University, for his discussion on Indian economy issues and strategies. Thank you, sir. I thank Professor Krishna Raj, Professor of Economics, ISAC, Bangalore, for his discussion on COVID-19, environment and sustainable development. Thank you, sir. I thank Professor S. T. Bagal Koti, Professor of Economics, Karnataka University, Darbhad, for his discussion on. India's health sector challenges in the past pandemic period. Thank you, sir. Mm. I thank Professor K. B. Rangappa, Chairman, Department of Economics, Davangere University, for moderating the whole panel discussion. Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Suchitra, Associate Professor of Economics, Davangere University, for giving welcome address. Thank you, ma'am. I thank Dr. Uche Gowda, a course coordinator for. introducing the resource persons i i thank you sir i thank everybody who participated in the panel discussion thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you all thank you all thank you, thank you dr rangappa well done congratulations thank you sir professor krishna sir professor keshav professor prakash thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir keshav sir thank you thank you sir thank you keshav sir thank you thank you, thank you. प्लीज Uh, so sir here before i i end the session i just have some announcements for the participants 
okay uh, yeah, yeah. some two three ano uh, some two three guidelines sir yeah uh, with your permission i'll just give two three guidelines for participants sir uh, be, okay yeah uh here all the participants the feedback form will be given to will be mailed to your personal email ids in 3 uh, hours yeah. time and in the feedback form please write your name as you want it to be written in the certificate if you want it in right. all capital letters please write your name in all capital letters otherwise please follow the prescribed format whatever your name however your name is written in the feedback form mm-hmm. the same will be reflected in the certificate okay. and we will include your uh, position as well and designation as well and along with designation the name of your institution so keeping in that uh, keeping that in context uh, write the name of your organization the way you want it to be reflected in the certificate and as far as the certificate is concerned certificate will be given for everyone within 5 days within 5 days you people can expect your certificate and please while filling the feedback form please don't uh, please double check your email ids because uh, for for 500 participants we just mailed the email and 15 mails bounced back and the last thing i want to tell is uh, as much as possible please give your gmail email ids don't give yahoo or rediff because the mails which have been bounced back are those belonging to yahoo.com or rediff.com while you are submitting your feedback form please submit the feedback form with your gmail id only please give your gmail id only double check your email ids in 3 hours you will get the feedback form in within 5 days you shall get your certificates thank you one and all okay ala in case uh, chetan if they are if they are not having gmail let them send if any any mails blows back we shall send them uh, in another mode okay yeah fine sir okay 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 we end the meeting right yeah fine sir